Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome one, welcome all. Welcome to the Fort's official High Seas Tournament 27. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a great day so far. It's about to get a little bit better because today we're going to be doing all kinds of goodness. It's going to be amazing. Looking to join into a voice chat with the game developers themselves as we go through the tournament. It will still be a couple minutes here before we get into uh, before we start out with the first event or the first round here as we are currently cat herding everyone it's a good time all around looks like the players are starting to join so we should be going along smoothly Would you join into the voice call here? Hello there, 42. I am here and I will be, uh, I'll be muted unless I need to speak or something else is going around. Uh, I'll unmute if nose comes and joins, but for now, I'll be here. All right. Looks like we have the French have arrived. You could use the bracket command. If you wish potential spoilers, or at least uh, to see what the current standings are within this tournament. Remember that we are running off of a two minute delay. So there will be a delay on chat and thus very little interaction between myself and chat for this. I will be focusing almost exclusively on the gameplay and the content itself. Looks like first up. French team. I'm into it. I do want to say, as we get started here, that I am not the only caster here of this competition. Uh, we also have Zaltzberg, who's currently casting live on Twitch in the German language. So for those looking to get some uh, different languages involved, make sure to check them out. You could use the caster's command, courtesy of King Benja. Thank you, thank you. I believe the French caster is not online today. Which is unfortunate. Half of the players are here and working on the other half. <laughs> Which team is Eaton? Eaton is <laughs> Eaton is his own team. Oh no. It begins. Yes, yes, the uh, you guys will get to see all the players as they go. You can check out the bracket command and uh, see for yourselves which players you wish to see. Which players are your favorite? I'm actually curious as to what players, which teams you guys believe are your favorite. So I know a team Greenleaf is here. Team Greenleaf is quite 
quite popular. One of the favored teams or favorite teams of the lot. Um, ben Seen is here, which is always a good showing. I'm into it. I don't see the uh, the Russian team. The Russian team isn't here today. And that makes me a little sad. They're very good. Very fun to watch. <laughs> you call the Russian team. Hal Rassi as the, uh, the star player there. If only, if only. <laughs> oh, dare you be cheeky. I would never. we're having some the cat herding begins early uh, looks like we're having some difficulties right getting the first match started here which is not terribly surprising uh, a lot of times it takes a little bit to get people in for the first first round. It gives us an opportunity to chat. Say hello there, Mary, and Shadow, Andromeda, welcome in, Jaildred, Chow for Zombies, Ron Zardis, HP Blasco, welcome in, Night Knave, Jason Zoltzgein, Joshua, Spy Team, Casual Sleeping Dragon, DLMC. Welcome, welcome. Flay, welcome, welcome. Debensin, best player though. He's pretty good. He's always. Debensin is one of those players that always puts on a good show for the fans. I'd say, um, I appreciate. I appreciate Bensin. I also get a fun name to say. <clears throat> it is not lost on me that his full name is spelled out on the uh, on the bracket when you click on it. Check out his team name. Um, but I won't be pronouncing his full name uh, during the match. To be moving on to the next match here. Oh, come. Get a different set of players to uh, get a, to get the game going. Starting it up soon.
<sighs> you don't see the lobby? Uh, that is on purpose. That is that is intentional. players are having an issue now. Yeah, 42. I've not seen the lobby. I think I'm going to have to recreate it. has been recreated. Done and done. Uh, yeah, Blasco, uh, as I'm sure you figured out, uh, the best place is in the uh, tournament Discord. As much as I would love to be quick on things in Twitch chat, um, we are on a two minute delay. So, best place to contact or to do any kind of interaction like that is on the uh, the actual Discord channel for this. More Power World when I uh, will be doing more Power World later. Uh, not right now. First match will be. Am I gonna try to pronounce this? Shizvoni Bedzi versus Greenleaf. It's a Polish team versus Greenleaf. I am curious to see how that spans out. I expect. I suspect Team Greenleaf will come out on top, but I am very interested to see how Dasio, Kikap, and Blasco manage it. Alright, we are about ready to go. The players are in. The match is made. Finishing up and double checking. And we'll be jumping into the action momentarily. Greenleaf versus Trisvoni Bedzi. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that anything close to correct.
Alright, the players are ready. Let's do this. Off to round one in the tournament. Tournament 27 kicking off right now. It's going to be beautiful. Team Drizvoni Bedzi versus Gr Team Green Leaf. And we're off. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, on the left hand side. One of the Polish teams, Dacio, Blasko, and Kikab, playing as the Architect Commander. They'll be facing off against their opponents. Team Green Leaf, Robostos, Vicro, and Drunistian. Team Green Leaf is one of the more popular teams around here. Uh, very, they're very good at the game. They haven't quite taken first place, uh, but they've come close. And so they're like the constant, like they're like the constant. I'm not underdog is underdog is a strong word, but they're like close, they're like second place winners. A majority of the time. Uh, what? Why is? Uh oh, something broke. Uh, there we go. Okay. And we're off. There we go. All right. So as I, as I was saying, Team Greenleaf is a uh, like the second place almost every time, and it's it makes for a team that a lot of players wants to a lot of players want to root for because well they're close to winning almost every time. It's like so close but not quite there. It looks like we have some, I'm going to describe, interesting boat designs out of Team 2 here, or Team 1 here. Team 2, as you can see, a little bit more optimized. We see the tall backgrounds, very low amount of resources spent, just to get a sufficiently stable structure to build their, to build their smokestacks on. We see a dramatic difference between the other players here on the teams. The measure of uh, inconsistency, which is usually indicative of a lack of consistent build order. A lack of, I'm going to say, lack of practice. So that's, uh, that's going to be a big difference coming in here. As we see here, just the rate at which the players are progressing through their uh, build order is not the same. Well, 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 well. If it isn't Nozed, welcome. Hello in. there. How you doing? Doing very well. We're just kicking off the first round. Good timing. Yes, good great timing. timing. <laughs> it's uh, four and a half minutes into the first match, and the uh, lovely the shots haven't started firing yet. Uh, okay, uh, apparently oh. I just crashed to the lobby screen. Give me a second. Oops. <laughs> That's unpleasant. Uh, also getting notifications that the players got kicked. Oh, weird. Uh, looks like 42's hosts... Looks like the host died. Which is quite unpleasant. Hmm. Give me a minute. Yeah, so I'm seeing the lobby as still present but i think 
42 is uh, struggling because it, it's not... Interesting, okay. Let's see if we can reload it in. One moment, please. Yes, technical difficulties. <laughs> this is why we have the lobby management screen. There's usually some difficulties like this. It looks like we was able to save the game state. So we should be able to load back in here. All right. We are missing one player and Zalzvak. Zalzvak. Where's which player are we missing? It is Keycap, I think. We have Dacio, Blasco. Looks like Forge is going to misbehave today. Well, um. Usually doesn't. Quartz is usually pretty good about that. Hmm. But uh, hey, we, you know, we got it. We we have a, we have a developer here. We can we can assess him for it. <laughs> yeah, blame me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nah, it's a, it happens. Mm -hmm. All right. It does. It does indeed. It looks like we are back in the action. We are loaded from the game state. So very, very clean, or at least as clean as it can be when such difficulties happen. So we are once again, good to go. Oh God, it saved all my camera positions. It's beautiful. Nose, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. That makes me so very happy. You have no idea. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Team Greenleaf. Um, I'm going to be honest. Team Greenleaf, this looks like a class act. And Greenleaf is just a mile ahead in the build order. And they are shaping up to deal comical amounts of damage. Uh, compared to... I'm going to give this a try. Triz... Vonni Trisvoni Bedzi. Uh, yeah, that name, that's insane. <laughs> this is I I mentioned it before. Like I understand. I understand my family's Polish. I understand my grandmother would speak Polish sometimes at me. I never learned it, and my experience with it has been way too many consonants. And just extra letters <laughs> everywhere. I don't know how to I don't know how to read that. Uh, yeah. My English-based brain doesn't function that way. Um, I should probably spend s at least some time trying to learn how to pronounce basic things. Just be able to read the words. Just phonetically sound out the word. I should be able to at least do that. But, oh, wow. It's you do a better job than is. I would. <laughs> All right. Oh, shots fired. We have the first shots fired. Actually dealing some damage, takes out a shotgun in the process. Uh, looks like Team Greenleaf just doesn't care, and I don't blame them. Uh, with only two deck guns unupgraded, you're not going to be dealing an incredible amount of damage here. Oh my god. <laughs> the projectile split the beam. I mean... That is, it is very effective. Shotguns are the way to go mm. if you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, actually clear the skies with some consistency. We have a bunch of weapons here doored with single doors. Uh, 20 mils all over the place. And Team Greenleaf, it's coming up on seven, on six and a half minutes here. 
Greenleaf is not quite ready to retaliate. Yeah. Looks like they're gonna looks like they're gonna do so anyways. Shouldn't get a whole lot of damage done against Team One here. Uh, team One not great in the anti-air, but oh, oh, they oh. got a lucky shot there. Yes, unstable top half. A single deck gun shell takes out three twenty mils. I did not expect that. More deck guns fire. Oh, and, and here comes the airstrike. Come. This is probably lethal. Oh. Oh, that could have been so much worse if they yeah. managed yeah. to, if uh -oh, they managed to uh, take it out. Uh, hmm. That disconnected, but I didn't see a timeout hour. Is that a purposeful disconnect? He lags. Okay, I didn't see a I didn't see a timeout error in the uh, in the chat log. It looks like he's experiencing experiencing some. Uh, internet connectivity issues. So we'll give that a moment. I was fully expecting that deck gun to explode and take the core with it, or at least most of the, most just yeah. chunk the front of that base. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just thinking about the last tournament we had was co-op, I think. And, mm -hmm. But this one is deathmatch. Yes. Which is going to be a bit more intense on the... Well, I don't know. It's interesting. Co-op is intense in its own way, isn't it? It is. You know, um, in in deathmatch, when you lose a, a teammate, you're, you're... You know, that's one less person you have able to man fairly large ship, you know? <laughs> Correct. The uh, co-op is, I have strong feelings about co-op, but only because I typically do public lobbies and um, the experience yeah. for co-op and public lobbies is very, very different from the experience of having, you know, a friend or two that you join in with. Oh, um, of course, of course. You know, like in a team, you know, you'd assume somebody would take the role of you know, the captain or the leader and, you know, it would be more organized, you know, and uh, everybody's being aware of resources that are available and, you know, this sort of thing. Exactly. Uh, that's mm. not the case in most random lobbies. So it's mm. not... That's true. It's, I, I am biased here, but <laughs> in these tournaments, uh, I, I'm well aware that it is a very different experience. And it's actually quite interesting because it enables the players to work together in a way that you can't normally get in deathmatch the mm. um everything for as simple as i remember there being moments where they would just build three snipers and just say all right these two players your sole purpose is to use these three snipers and just do nothing but suppress yeah. the opponents the entire game yep. that's yep. that's your purpose in life mm. which is a handy purpose for sure <laughs> it was it was oppressive, is what it was. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Oh. That hit core really damage. Hard. Ta took Robo's core down to 86%. I'm curious to see Robo build up so tall here. Um, typically in this map, the front base mm -hmm. doesn't build tall because if the front base builds tall, then the rear bases yeah. can't do direct fire. And that's kind of what we see here where Vicro can't support Robo here in the anti-air department because of that. Right. Similarly, right. the rear base always builds tall so they can reach over the front base and help with the, uh, the anti-air. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And yet we see Robo building tall here, and he's putting himself in a position where he can't... 
he can't receive help from his teammates. And it's, uh, it's painful. It's noticeable. As those howitzer just keep coming through. Uh, yeah, oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. pretty, that's just about lethal there. Can you? <laughs> there it goes. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay. Retaliate in kind. One for That's one. Good. Team Greenleaf One's loses cool. a player. As does uh, Team uh, Bedsy. I was wondering what you were going to call him. <laughs> I think Bedsy is the Bedsy. Bedsy? Okay. Word. Yeah, that makes sense. So. Oh, I'm Vicro. Uh, Vicro crunched. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. What have you done, Vicro? Uh, so it's Dranistian versus the world, or at least Dacio and Keycap. I actually, I suspect Dranistian's gonna have advantage here. Uh, the raw damage output of nice, yeah, of uh, Dranistian's just—it's uh, a—he has more firepower than the other two combined. It's just a matter of whether or not yep. he can survive, and he's got substantial anti-air. As you can yes. see, oh yeah, clearing the wow. skies himself. He's built tall <laughs> with lots of anti-air and a lot of cannon fire to go with it. Uh, Dranistian, yeah. I think, has got this, but I'm impressed. Uh, yeah. Team Bedsy has done quite well. Oh, pause. Uh, more technical difficulties? Question mark. <clears throat> I was wondering why Dranistian wasn't firing. Oh. Uh, he was, uh, he lagged out. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, but he's back now. So, something is going on at the internet today, it would seem. Mm -hmm. um, 42 is the host at the moment? I was thinking, my mind was going toward a... My mind is going toward the general infrastructure issues that have been around recently. Okay. Um, the internet All for right. the past few days has been, I'm going to describe it as incredibly inconsistent. Hmm. In general, across the entire world. There, there's a statement. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, something <laughs> across the East Coast United States. So I, I, I haven't okay, looked yeah, across, yeah, yeah. I haven't looked across Europe. Uh, it makes me wonder if, it makes you wonder if there's something else going on. As I know, there was some commentary about the uh, solar storms knocking around some infrastructure, like a power-sensitive system. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that could definitely happen on a more global scale, couldn't it? That, that's, that's, that's where my mind is going now. Mm. Mm. But I believe the players are back, so we're... Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's disconnecting people again. Hmm. I think, well, well Zelts got kicked. Uh, maybe because these are European players, uh, maybe we could have Zelts hosts. Can we get through this, the rest of this game, do you think? I hope so. I would think so. I mean, the players are here and the match is not gone. It's yeah. just... Yeah. You should be able to at least finish this one, as messy as this one has been. The technical difficulties haven't gotten in the way of the actual events of the lobby yet. All right, I got kicked again. Um, <laughs> if the Jeez. players are able to finish it. Let's see. 
Dacio and Dranistian. I'm going to sit on the lobby screen. Oh, Erinder, what, what's uh, what the issue is? Um, this looks like it's just like a desync spiral. There's this. I could describe it as an issue, um, where once one player des once the desync starts, the attempt to resync causes problems. Uh, which is not ideal, but no, because uh, I mean it. It, it the res it has resumed. I suspect. I suspect Jonas Dian is going to be winning that one real quick. Yeah. Yeah, he is defended a volley. I feel like I'm doing play by play on a hockey game radio. <laughs> oh, did you see that? <laughs> All right. Let me see if I could pull this up real quick. If you watch, uh... yeah, I'm pulling up uh... this. Um. 42 stream, yeah. Yep. 42 stream here. So we could see the we could see the match here just from a top perspective. Yeah. This is the uh, the co-caster's view. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually. I forget what the full full screen button is for. Discord. I don't think it actually has full full screen. Oh, here it we does. Go. Oh yeah, there's that. There's that hit. It uh, it does have full full screen. Oh, I it just does. forget what yeah. it is. There's a button for it. It requires you to hide the other. Requires you to hide the other members and i don't remember where that button that's is. in the in the, the little uh, dots <laughs> in the top screen Show oh this has to be it business. yep there we go victory to greenleaf well done greenleaf yeah <laughs> Send the desync report to the devs. <laughs> that one's going. It's <laughs> oh boy. Yep. Send all the desync reports. Forty two does a lot of uh, QA and like game testing for us, so he knows. He knows we need those. Yes. To fix those. I tend to not send. Okay, so we're going to be rehosting with Zeltsvelk. I believe here. Yeah, let's uh, yeah change. All right, sweet. Just to make sure that it's not something on uh, 42's end. some chat about the players requesting a rematch due to technical difficulties and I am honestly I'm okay with that just a redo of the round yeah that was pretty um egregious sporadic. amount sporadic yeah yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Said, yeah I like that phrase sporadic mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sporadic playtime uh, yeah would, would prefer if it was less messy mm.
go. All right, so we're loading into the next lobby here and getting the players in. So we should be able to uh, get this one going pretty quickly. <laughs> the uh, free information team one roughly translates to it won't be sober. Interesting. Uh, I figured I figured something about drunkness with the uh, bedsy. Yes, but I I don't know. I'm unfamiliar. Yeah, I, I, somebody, the, I think, I, I think Rome did a, yeah, Rome did a quick translation of the teams, because we have to double check the team names to make sure nobody's, you know, especially when they're in other languages, that somebody's not saying something they're not supposed mm -hmm. to in the public forum. So, uh, but this one seemed tame enough. But yeah, something to do about, something to do with drinking. All right, the players are here. The match is made. So we should be starting momentarily. Just a bit of uh, logistics uh, in the handover from 42 to Saul's work in the hosting duties. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, 42 having to... With 42 having to uh, help out from... Without being able to actually control things. Yep. Yeah. But it's all ready to go. And we're off to round two. Team Greenleaf versus Bedsy. Hopefully, I'm not familiar with the uh, players in Bedsy. I have seen Dacio before. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, the Team 2, Team Bedsy here, are somewhat newer players. They are as... You know how every tournament we have at least one team that's mostly inexperienced and mostly new players? Mm. Uh, team Bedsy is that team this time around. Yes. Yeah. I always love seeing them join. Um, it's just a little bit painful to watch what happens to them every time. Uh, <laughs> but it is it is just part of the experience you know you can't you can't get good if you don't get stomped at least once oh exactly all the best players that with from all the best teams is uh they once started as inexperienced players and it's <clears throat> It's nice to see them have, uh, nice to see their story over time. 
that Z equals is. Did I? I think that my understanding of the words is incomplete, which I am fully <laughs> aware is the case. Let's see. I'm probably still going to call them Bedsy because I. it's probably the easiest pronounce. And I'm not sure how to parse the rest of the Oh, word. for sure. Uh, yeah, that's T-R-Z-E-Z. -Z. Yeah, like, what the? <laughs> that's what <it> is. <laughs> Uh, it it is fun to try to pronounce things like there's this funny bitsy, but still. In terms of this match, we have Greenleaf playing as the Overdrive Commander. Overdrive Commander giving them access to faster upgrades, so we get to see some more upgrades here. Um, this is pretty popular on high seas because you get access to faster producing deck guns which is quite mm -hmm. strong yep uh, you also get a slightly <clears throat> faster aircraft upgrade the uh, runway could be upgraded to allow you to produce aircraft twice as quickly and so getting that upgrade center out and getting the uh, runway upgraded means you can get twice as fa you can get aircraft twice as quickly even faster which is <clears throat> fun uh, Team Bedzi here, playing as the Shakana Commander. Shakana Commander specializes in more of the hybrid weapons. Uh, they take weapons like fire beams and 20 millimeters and upgrade them into full cannons. So we will expect to see 20 millimeter spam or the fire beam spam out of Team 2. It uh, looks like everyone on Team 2 is going for the munitions plant option, so 20 millimeters will be the expected weapon here. Just a matter of who gets shots first. Uh, for perspective here, uh, we're coming up on the four minute mark. Team Greenleaf has one player who's going for a standard fire beam plaza beam build order. Uh, you expect this to be hitting in the next 60 seconds. Uh, team 2 has yet to complete any of their heavy weapons tech, so they haven't even placed weapons yet. Um, we also have Robostos here. Has finished up... Finished up the initial bits of their deck cannons. They're upgrading them to level 2 deck cannons. We have an air the runway being upgraded to tier 2, which is rapidly completing. As we see here, we have one aircraft under construction. Uh, the moment this one completes, it will start building two aircraft simultaneously, which is very effective. Um, and that's one of the best ways to go about things. Right now, they right now Team One is just working on expanding their ego and defending themselves, and they're not really gearing up to fire just yet. Uh, we might get it. We might get a shot out of Robostos here. Looks like he's he's actually gearing up to fire. We're about to have first shot fired. Uh, we're at 5 minute 15 second mark. And first shots are fired. Good damage. Um, nothing critical is lost. Uh, mostly because nothing <coughs> critical was constructed. Uh, Keycap takes the first couple hits. Um, loses two pieces of metal and uh, two pieces of metal and a smokestack for a little bit of energy production. The first 20 miller, 20 millimeter comes out of Dacio. It gets sniped. Sniper strong. Uh oh, is he gonna get it? Ooh, Ooh almost got it. Jeez, that was Ooh. close. But the snipers, the snipers are devastating. Uh, the fire beam from the fire beam from Dranistian hits Dacio as well, causing some secondary explosions. Very effective. 
Um, team two is down to a single 20 millimeter as their weapon. They do have the commander ability active, or they do have the commander ability available, so they can upgrade those to st full on cannons. Ooh. Oh, but here comes that. Yep, and that went straight through. Yes. There's that beautiful airstrike. As here come the deck guns. Uh, Dacio is getting slammed. Um, fire beam, plasma beam combo cuts clean through. Blasco is the last one left. Now, Blasco does have weapons in the form of 20 mils, but he's going to need a little bit more firepower than just two 20 mils. Mind you, they do have their commander a, a active ability, which they are using, so we'll get cannons here. Full on cannons. Swing it a hit. Uh, reasonable damage uh, did hit square on target where they wanted to hit. Uh, Robostos is fully protected from single cannon rounds like that. Blasco is going to have to do a lot more damage than just two cannon rounds to break through that defense. Um, I suspect they won't get the opportunity. Oops. Yeah. Laser beam cuts through, disconnecting Blasco's weapons, leaving Blasco with no firepower to their name. Blasco immediately places down another 20mm to start construction. Uh, the sniper detects the cannon has been placed because the door has been placed in front of it, leaving it exposed. And so the sniper is just going to say, hey, I'm going to go touch this. Fire beam hitting. That fire beam is probably the biggest threat to, uh, to that 20 mil right now. Uh, because the fire beam pens the, pens the door and hits the cannon behind it. You see the cannon is currently smoking. Another hit like that and it will detonate even without the door being destroyed. Duck gun slams low. Taking out the bottom of Blasco's... Uh, that's got to be a... Yeah, it's, it's bad. Yeah, you would think. Here comes the airstrike. <laughs> And he's gone. Burned to the ground. Wow. Decisive. Team Greenleaf. Very decisive. <clears throat> All right. Well, there is Greenleaf versus Betsy. Mm -hmm. Very, very well done. Awesome. I'm hoping to see uh, Greenleaf uh, in the next season of the FPL. It would be nice to uh, yes. see those guys continue. I'm excited. The Forts Pro League is starting about a month from today, is it? Y yeah, more or less, yes. Yeah. I'm and so it's, uh, very excited. Yeah, I was just going to... Yeah, me too, to be honest. And um, and we're, we've made some changes to the format. Um, and... Uh, just to improve things, basically. Um, and we initially had uh, the Amateur League and the Pro League, um, and uh, decided to combine them both into the Pro League uh, for Season 3, um, and we'll see how, how that works. Mainly, we're just trying to keep uh, the league uh, sort of constantly active, and what was happening when it was split like that is... Uh, the amateur league was ticking along, but the pro league was sort of, uh, I'll use that word again, sporadic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so by combining the two and just making, you know, the one league with both pros and amateurs in it, um, it, it will give the amateurs a chance to get better by playing against better people. Uh, mm -hmm. but it'll also help keep the, the pros, uh, active as well you know what i mean like they'll have to do their matches uh, uh as as scheduled uh and that will help uh just move things forward basically so um yeah it's going to be quite interesting and that's going to be when that opens anybody can join it right so if you have a team and you want to and you want to join into the the pro league then when it opens just sign up and uh 
yeah, and、uh, have at it. <laughs> so it should be should be pretty fun. Yes, I am. I am very excited for that reason. We get to see、yeah. all the newer players join in. Again, I know I've mentioned that. Hey, we have these newer players who come and join the tournaments, and we always have a, new,、uh, a team of newer players in,、uh, and they always suffer the same fate because it's just. Forts, like most RTS games, does require a substantial amount of skill and practice. And as a newer team, as a new player, you just don't have that. It takes hours, many hours, in order to make it happen. And that's something、yep. that is a joy to watch because we'll see newer players come and join. We'll see them usually get rolled right out the gate, and then <laughs> they come back again, and they don't get rolled as hard. And they come、yep. back again, and just, oh, they, they actually won a round. And then they come back again, and oh no, they're they're like beating players left and right, which is awesome. Yep, it creates it this、is. beautiful story over time. It does. It does. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So that will、uh, you'll see an announcement on all the、uh, Forts channels as to when the、uh, FPL signups are open. But that should be happening in, I would imagine, in maybe a couple weeks or so. Yes, very soon. I do want to say shout out to River Rose coming in and raiding in with the, with the crew. Welcome, welcome. I hope you guys enjoy. As we have four and forty-two,、uh, will have his hands full trying to organize that. <laughs> oh the, yeah, the cat,、um, the cat herding is real. In fact, it's not just forty-two. There's a few. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> in the. <laughs> I remember helping out at the beginning of the、uh, the first Forts Pro League, and I'm like, "This is a lot." Yeah.、Uh, yeah, it is. I I applaud. I applaud Forty Two. <laughs> I applaud Romero. I, it's yeah. Good job all around.、Mm. Yeah, I agree. Let's see. So next up, it should be Team Bog Ships versus Team Infernus. This will be a good match.、Uh, this will be. I I think this will be a very good match. I'm wondering if Trezeswa. <sighs> Trezeswani Bedzi <laughs> managed to do what the name promises. Maybe. I mean, it is it is alcohol o'clock over in Poland. You really wish you had a friend who's competent for it. Jamming, you join us for like all of the community matches, for all the community nights whenever we do forts. Like you are always in lobbies with players that are literally. Tournament level. You've been in law. <laughs> you've. I'm. I'm ninety nine percent certain you've been in lobbies with Eaton, either alongside or getting stomped by. Come on, <laughs> like it's a regular、Eaton's、thing. Eaton's a stomp. Ah. <laughs>、uh. So, in curse is looking at the at the bracket. Do you have a, a favorite to win this?、Uh, boot cannoneers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're、any、like, okay, well, any particular reason? <laughs> any particular any particular reason this man <laughs> says? I I'll go over it when we when we get down to their match. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, it's a,、uh, it's a good one,、uh, but this time it's this round is bog ships versus infernus. Some actually really fun players here.、Uh, Drabensi is here for one, which is one of my favorites so far. Yep. Can we play flying forts? That's what the、uh, community nights are for. 
I've been playing so much Fort Ships recently that whenever I see these boats here, I'm like, oh, <laughs> how do we make it fly? <laughs> because uh, Fort Ships, I've been doing a whole lot of, honestly, a lot of these vanilla maps do really well for Fort Ships, uh, specifically the high seas vanilla maps. Oh yeah, that's good. Because there's there's no terrain to cause collision issues, so you just float in the water, and then when you get flying, you just, you know, fly. Mm -hmm. And you already have a ship-shaped object to start with, so it's yeah, really right. convenient. <laughs> so I've been doing been doing a hefty amount of that recently on almost exclusively high seas maps. Yep. Just because it's it's that good. Let's see. Let's go ahead and introduce our players for this time around. Here we have on the left hand side Team Infernus playing as the Overdrive Commander. We have Bulliga, DLMC, and Hunter playing against their opponents Team Bog Ships, Meister, Slack, and Derbenzin. Uh, Bog Ships is playing as the Warthog Commander. So, two pretty popular commanders here. Um, bog ships playing as the warthog commander they get access to the empowered heavy weapons so during their commander active all their heavy weapons such as nukes cannons the heavy lasers um, they just deal extra damage incredibly effective commander ability very simple uh not gimmicky it's just just does more damage like you can't go wrong with more damage this is compared to overdrive commander from team infernus this one's a bit more gimmicky. This one's primary primary boost, primary benefit is that it gives bonus upgrade speed. So whenever you upgrade a device, it takes some time to reconstruct it. There's some timing there. Overdrive Commander just halves that. It doesn't sound like much, but oh boy, do you feel it. In a match where, when a match that lasts 10 minutes, shaving 60 seconds off of upgrading time, if you're doing a lot of upgrades, is a massive time. So that's that's primarily what we see there. The question is, what build orders are we going to be going for? What kind of weapon sets? Team 1, unsurprisingly, has an upgrade center. Every player has an upgrade center. Uh, the topmost players going shotgun heavy. Not a surprise, uh, the top-down approach to anti-air is uh, pretty popular, pretty common. When I mentioned it before in the first match, the one that was super scuffed, about the rearmost player going heavy anti-air, they could shoot over and support all of their teammates from above. This is fundamentally what Hunter is doing here. He's going to be getting uh, probably three shotguns to be assisting with the anti-air department. The other players are getting upgrade centers as well, but the upgrade center is not going to be their primary tool. Uh, we see, for example, Bulia here has an upgrade center. Uh, we'll be upgrading things like their smokestacks and their economy, but primarily they'll be using laser weaponry. We see here multiple fire beams. Multiple fire beams, probably just going fire beam spam. Very effective. We've seen it. You can get three, four of them out on the field. You can just start burning players down in a uh, comically painful way. Compare this to Team Bog Ships, who's going full memes. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we've got the Magna Cannon Strat. This one is fun, it is effective, it is inconsistent and incredibly difficult to pull off due to the amount of coordination you need. And I'm not going to say anything else about it. You will get to see it in mm. action. It'll be pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just make sure to point it out when they're ready to go. Meister, you sir are having some stability issues. You should fix that. Interested to see DLMC here delaying their heavy weapons here by this much instead with flak and shotguns They only have one player on the team who's capable of dealing any damage whatsoever, and they have two fire beams Just not a lot of fire beam uh, So team one is just incredibly low on the whole damage output thing whereas team two is um, Shaping up to be hilariously lethal I think hilariously lethal is the appropriate description. 
I'm ready for it. I am so very ready for this. Like, I could already see Meister's just going to sell off half of his fort, you know, like the front chunk of it, just to make this happen. Fire beams going. So these fire beams typically just burn through things. Uh, deal damage to weapons behind you. Yeah, there's, there's the sell off. He's like, oh, this is on fire. I don't care. I'm selling it off just in its entirety. He's, he's going to have to do a little bit more selling here. Or some listing. One of the two. Uh, good luck. It's about time. What are you... How much of your base are you selling there, sir? Oh, yes. There you go. All right. Good. Do it. Fire. They're doing it. Yeah. Oh, ho, nice. Ho, ho. Nice. Oh, that was... Death from above. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the Magna Cannon strategy. Uh, one player uses the Magna Beam, targets, a play targets an enemy player, uh, the other players on the team all just shoot in the general direction, mm -hmm. and all of those cannon shells get sucked into the targeted beam, which is a disgusting amount of damage. And because of the angle it comes at, almost no one is prepared for it ever. Like, it's incredibly difficult to prepare for that. I mean, the cannons can mm -hmm. come from directly above, they can come from behind, they can come from below. I mean... It's ridiculous, the amount of angles that it yep. comes from. And then they just do it again. <coughs> and they just don't stop doing it again. Hmm. Yeah, it could work. Yeah, it looks like they're getting ready to do it again. Uh, two out of three players are ready to fire. Three out of three are ready, and... Do it. <laughs> You're like the, uh... Oh! oh, oh yes. Yes. There it is! Lovely. <laughs> Death from behind. Oh my god, it's beautiful. That's, uh, that's what we love to see. Yeah, it's it's it takes a little bit of coordination to make that work, you know. Which is the it's just cool to see when a team can get it together like that. Oh yeah, even in, the reason we don't see this often is not because it isn't powerful, but because the amount of coordination is required is intense to the points where even competitive grade players like these players here often mess it up. Um, it is it just requires a level of coordination that is just about impossible outside of voice comms and even on voice comms mechanically difficult to do uh, remember that this is a real-time strategy and when you're doing seven things simultaneously as fast as you can yeah one little mistake is all it takes for, to shut this whole thing down just the timing the timing yeah. is so very difficult <clears throat> and the uh the du double-edged sword of of when you're magnet beam gets destroyed and it becomes magnetic in your own base <laughs> is its own unique problem yes yeah so it's so you, you it's not something that should be uh, treated lightly mm -hmm. i will say team infernus uh they have redeveloped uh hunter in the rear has expanded to gain some additional firepower Looks like they're not trying to use the Magna Beam combo, instead just pummel them in the face with cannons, which is an effective strategy. One of my favorites. Last stream we did, hmm. I uh, pummeled a player for an entire hour with cannons. I was impressive that they, I was impressed they managed to live yeah, for that long. Yeah, I think I watched that. I think I watched that and that was like, I, I couldn't understand how he was taking all those hits. <laughs> he was, it was a lot. It was a lot of hits, but you know, <laughs> it was inevitable that he would fall. They could only take cannons mm. for so long. An hour's a little long. <laughs> yeah. But it was a lot. So here come the cannons. Cannon shall sing. Ooh, mortars. Team 2 is not really prepared, but they are rapidly becoming prepared for them. 
I don't blame him for trying mortars. Uh, mortars are cheap. You can get them on the field quickly. You can develop some amount of pressure. It's good to have. It's good to make your opponents react to you. Um, this mortars are a good way to do that. Oh. Uh, Hunter is just getting perforated by cannon fire. Hmm. That's really all there is to it. Hmm. The magna beam over penetrating uh, means that those cannons will not hit their target. Hunter has a bit of a list. Oh, that's a good word to describe it. He's uh, <laughs> leaning mightily. Yep. Their once shotguns are no longer, no longer usable. Hard walled and blocked. That's a lot of sandbag. Panic sandbag at that. Uh, team one switching over to the nuclear strike tech. Uh, good tech. Uh, curious to see how that's going to work out. Uh, team 2, I think, is not prepared. Oh, issues with the Magna Beam. Oh, that's bad. I'm so... Yep. They must have been panicking, screaming at each other, like, Oh, God, no, don't fire yeah. your cannons! <laughs> that's a, that's well, another example of something that can go wrong. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just one little hit like that. If Team 2 had fired their weapons, that would have been Meister's death. Just yep. immediately. That had been six plus cannons going straight into Meister from behind, it would have been devastating. Surprise, Bullia isn't. I guess Bullia's energy production is a little bit uh, scuffed right now. It's worth noting that uh, Team 2 can see this missile silo as well as the uh, borders. That's why Team 2 has developed such a strong amount of... Oh! Oh, oh wow. I didn't even see the hole in which that went through. Uh, but it's gone. Death from above. <laughs> what do you think of uh, Hunter's tech placement? At um, the bottom there. <laughs> I am concerned <laughs> that he's lost a mine slot. Or yeah, exactly. slot, I guess. Seems like a it's not unusual. The, it is unusual. It's not mm. the most not like a criminal offense or anything. But it's not optimal. And yeah. in a tournament, not optimal is just about tens amount to death. It's probably not a meaningful element. It's probably not. Given the state of the game, it probably wasn't a meaningful, I'm going to say, mistake. But it's definitely painful to say. Oh, oh. the strength of the magnet. You can see it mm. there. Yep. There's another thing that can uh, go wrong with the magnet. Uh, if you miss the magnet shot, the opponents are immune to damage for the duration of the magnet beam. An unfortunate loss for Hunter. With that, the last weapon is gone. No more weaponry whatsoever for Hunter. They exist to eat cannon shells for the foreseeable future. That's a lot of cannons. It is a lot of cannons. Let's see, we've got <laughs> nine cannons. No, ten cannons. That is a lot of cannons. Yeah, five cannons each. It's a lot. Cannons are so easy to just spam out on uh, high seas. Uh, what do you think of the uh, overheat change to the uh, the runway? I think it is a 
good... I don't want to call it a stopgap because it does kind of solve the problem. Uh, but I think mm. it is a good... A good patch to the problem of... Uh, like it solves the problem of the aircraft spam. Yes. Because, um, yeah, that, if you be remember... It can still be to some substantial degree, but it does mm. solve the problem of the aircraft spam. Because like last get, uh, tournament, okay. that was the, you know, as soon as somebody, you know, prepared enough aircraft and launched them, it was pretty definitively going to be the end of their target, you know? Yes. Um, I think to, that's... To a degree where it was, like, it was a bit ridiculous, you know? Yeah. So... That's... I think that's the... I think that's the uh, description. It's... It was to a degree that it was ridiculous. Um, mm. I think... That is still the case, but it costs a little bit more to do that. Um, yep. We haven't seen aircraft spam in that same way. Uh, we have seen aircraft already, and they are effective. Uh, but I haven't seen yeah. aircraft spam in a way that is problematic yet. But I also would yeah. expect to not have seen it yet. As, as we have yep. fog ships here, it's basically doing a meme build. I don't know what... Inf I have no idea what Infernus was doing. In the previous match with Greenleaf, Greenleaf... I would expect to not do anything crazy against their particular opponents because they don't want to, you know, reveal strategies and such. Um, so I would expect it to. I would expect the big strategies to not have revealed themselves yet. Yeah. Um, Early days yet, but I guess that's you know that's the the cool thing about having these tournaments is, yes. you know, it, it's a bit of a. You know, watch watch the game get played in in anger, so to speak, and you know what I mean, and see. Um, it's a it, you know gives us a, a snapshot of the balance when played um, competitively. You know. Mm -hmm. Also, shout out to that mortar range. It's perfect. <laughs> What is this man doing? Oh my god, why are you like this? It's fine. It's not even vulnerable to tier 3. I mean, I guess he kind of is. Uh, but the mortars should see the end of this. Uh, mortars are some of the highest DPS weapons in the game. And as long as they don't get all sniped, which they are currently, uh, then the mortars will eventually break through this. Uh, the cannons are kind of having trouble because of the angle of, of things. Yep. Uh, cannons would eventually break through this, but it would... With, they can break the base, but the base can't be shot. So that's why the mortars are here. The magna beam helps with the whole cannon angle thing. Uh, that technically did some damage to the core, but it just... it, it barely missed. Had a Mojave worth of sand in those bags. Yes, got a full beach solution. <laughs> I appreciate Hunter for this. Oh, I realize no, the franticness. I, I realize the he's just stalling. This is real. <laughs> yes. No. No. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Like he's panicking. It's beautiful. I realize he's just stalling, but yeah. I appreciate a player that can hang on like this. Yeah, and he's he can, making uh, their opponents work for it out of spite. Yeah, all he's doing is just showing off. He's like, "Hey, you can't yeah. kill me." Yeah, can he last the whole twenty minutes? <clears throat> uh, he's only got sixty seconds left. So at this rate, yeah. probably mm -hmm. I I would imagine <laughs> so. Uh, he's more importantly, uh, Hunter managed to snipe out those mortars, which means without that mortar fire coming in, he's not going to be able to. They're not going to be able to kill him. That's a couple of uh, out of sync cannon volley slash magna beam. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gone T3, eh? <laughs> so. Tier 3 is effective, uh, but they're not going to be able to break him before the uh, time limit here. No. Uh, Hunter is well defended from such things. Like he might be able to get it. Even if the tier 3 hits the vulnerable backside, it's not going to cause like a capsize. So, 
He's fine. The mortars are starting to come online again, but too little, too late. Bog ships with the victory. Well done. What I need to do is I, uh, I need to check out some of those beautiful shots that came through because we had an incredible series of hits from some of the most memed on weaponry. I will be right back. Weaponry. Ladies and gentlemen, the shot that went around the boat. Death from above. That's a, uh, that's a good time all around. That's not the right one. That's the right one. Thank you. I also want to see what happened to... Uh, happened to this here. How did this one get taken down? Was it just a massive cannon merge? Excuse me. What? Did that do what I think it did? Or is that background? Okay. Okay, no, that's background bracing. All right. Good God. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so that's just background bracing. So it just happened to slide through these few and tip the core. All right, good God. That was a lucky shot, but it wasn't particularly well defended. So lucky, but not exceptionally so. That was incredible. And we're off. To round two. Bog ships versus Infernus. So here we have, on the left hand side, Team Bog ships. Playing as the Warthog Commander against their opponent's Team Infernus. Also the Overdrive Commander. Makes me wonder, what strategies will we see this time? I'm always super interested in going lasers whenever we see a top fort like this. Just because lasers are so incredibly effective at slicing opponents off the top. But the reality is the uh, the howitzer just does so much, it's so much more effective. The howitzer just rips and tears. So as the, <clears throat> this map has that potential of base dropping on base. It does, and in like the worst way, because the <laughs> fort that falls from above generally doesn't explode when it falls into the water, so that you just have this exclusivity zone around your fort where no one can build. It's like the worst. <laughs> 
It's like, oh God, no. Although it is, <laughs> it is fun though. In the case where the the water fort dies first and the top fort falls down in the water, they just have a free restart on life. They're just a water fort. Yeah, right. Which is awesome. <laughs> that is my favorite thing of all time. Um, less so when there's already a water fort there. Let's see. Of interest, uh, the top player, Ben Sin for Team 1, is going for Howitzers. Uh, whereas DLMC, the top player for Infernus, is going for Lasers. Both very destructive. Um, the top fort specifically, Lasers, is going to be extremely effective at destroying, uh, at slicing apart and slicing Durbensine off from the top. However, Durbensine doesn't have to worry about such things. They could just howitzer, break some foundation nodes, and uh, cause the entire base to crumble. The other players of the teams are using different strategies, uh, but similar-ish. Whereas Team Bogships at the Warthog Commander is just going straight heavy weapons. Uh, Infernus with the Overdrive Commander. Getting some anti-air up online. Uh, but then we'll be going for heavy weapons afterward. We see how it's replaced for Bullyaga. All right. I always gotta be, it, it always feels risky going for lasers. Not because lasers are bad, but because they just aren't quite as effective as the howitzer. But mm. they aren't quite as consistent as cannons, they aren't quite as damage heavy as the howitzer. But when you get in the work, it's almost a guaranteed slice, and that slice yes. is a double kill. And that double kill is incredibly yeah. valuable. Yeah. It's like a high risk, uh, high reward with... play. The um, howitzer shot has to be very particularly aimed, doesn't it? To cause that, you know what I mean? That damp, that where it peels off from the from the land. Yes. Uh, quite good at doing that, and we see mm. this tiniest of doors specifically angled to permit that exact shot. That shot, yeah. Uh, we have. <laughs> We have player DC. And it's not pausing. Zout's back! <laughs> oh, he's probably <laughs> muted chat. This the player came back. Oh, uh, there was the shot. There's that there shot. The shot. And it landed it, but it, it base wasn't... Base didn't collapse. That was the shot that, uh... That was the shot that Debensi was looking to make. He hit the shot perfectly. It just didn't did. do enough damage. DLMC was prepared no. to take the hit. Yeah. That's what makes yep. it risky. That was the Yeah. And um, that's the experienced uh, player, you know. Uh, I do wonder is uh, with the double buzz saw, DLMC may not be able to defend such a thing indefinitely. And then double buzzsaw follow up. Oh, yep, there, there it is. is. There it okay. is. And Ooh. worst case scenario. Yeah. Whoa! Look at the bounce. That was good. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. Oh no. A DLMC uh, slowly. He... Oh. He's. Can he do here? He's trying to sell off his yeah. own stuff. Yeah. to give Hunter the opportunity to reconstruct here. But he needs to be careful with that, because if he sells off yeah. too much, 
that his core is going to touch the water and he's going to explode. Oh, that's and he's going to take Hunter with him. He's still alive, but he, he is can't still do alive. Now. <laughs> exactly. And because he's present and his core has an ex uh, construction exclusivity zone around it, um, oh, Hunter also yeah. can't do much. Which is just unpleasant for both players right now. Right. Uh, deeply unpleasant. And DLMC can't go away without self-destructing. Which obviously would take Hunter with him. So that's just... That's exactly the situation that Drabensi was hoping to create. It's, effect, yeah. it's almost a two-player kill. Yeah. You remove one player, you effectively remove a second player. Which is just devastating, you know, for Team 2. Yeah, because I guess if... If... Uh, DLMC built a weapon and fired it, he could potentially hit... Hunter. Mm-hmm. Not that mm -hmm. he would be able to build a weapon yeah. ever. Um, at least <laughs> not at this point. I suppose if DLMC had a weapon... Which actually he may have had a weapon. Did he? I thought that's what he did, but I, I assumed he got rid of it because he because because of yeah. that. Pro that he probably got rid. You know. I think he had a weapon when it fell down. I don't know if he still has a weapon. He might still have a weapon and hidden in there somewhere. Uh, another issue: DLMC's core is not as defended as Hunter's core because you know, unsurprising. <laughs> and uh, when DLMC's oh. core goes, oh, what a hit! Then Hunter takes it with it. This and, uh, is just what Well, it, actually, this could this could I wonder it, did, this could even <laughs> Who connected that? Was did Hunter connect to that or did DLMC <laughs> connect to that? That is hilarious. It's just so did a he, horrible did he amalgamation. <laughs> Oh my god, DLMC 100% connected to that. You no, did. no, never mind. No, no, that, Hunter did. Hunter oh, did. Oh, no, he didn't. Okay. Oh, okay. oh that would have been... That oh my awesome. god. I was like, he's building up and around. Hunter can't build there. He no, it's is. just... <laughs> oh my god. This whole time, Bulga is just getting bullied. But... <laughs> yeah. And nobody's watching, because we're watching... We're Hunter. just watching this madness. <laughs> this, this is why... This is why... Uh, ben Seen wanted to do this because I mean, how how do you how do you supposed to manage this base? Like this, it's unmanageable. This is the uh, quantum physics base, or it used to be. Oh God! <laughs> the worst part about that, DLM's Hunter's core didn't get shot there. DLMC's core got shot. Yeah. And DLMC's core exploded, causing Hunter to take go with it. Like, that's just... It yeah. is the worst way to go, because you can't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I've already died. It's, it's worse than a core falling on you, because at least if a core falls on you, you just explode, and it's over. This, it's <laughs> not over. But you, you, you're gonna die. You can't win. But you also could still play the game. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Well, that was exciting. Uh, yeah, it was. That was great. So now we have the cannons that are going to be raining from above. Uh, let's see. Two standard cannons and a 20 mil. Standard cannons hitting Bulga yeah, from up. Oh, they're digging. Yeah, I think they're just going to keep digging because, oh no, yeah. they're doing it again. That's a magna beam. Uh, Thought he was building a fire beam. It's not a fire beam. It's a magna oh. What's he dropping there? Uh, it's a howitzer. Oh. oh, geez. I'm wondering why. Okay. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. <laughs> oh, I see. 
42 says he's passing it to passing it to his teammate. That's interesting. I guess, I guess just that's for yeah. resource. Hmm. Hey, you need more cannons. Use this as money. Here we go. Ooh. Not the best magna beam, but no. it did hit really hard. Uh, probably more due to it being something <laughs> like 10 cannons again. Uh, actually, these 11 cannons. Uh, one of the cannons made it down there. Can you grab it? <laughs> no grab. Okay. It's almost Magna Beam again. That's a good Magna Beam. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, nice. that's a lot of damage. It's an incredible amount of damage right there. Bog ships styling on their opponents with uh, extra flare. This is my favorite way to do it. We are 100% checking that one out again. Yeah, that was that was satisfying. <laughs> Very. It's just so much cannon fire just ripping through. It is. <clears throat> that doesn't get old. That never gets old. <laughs> Next up is Team Boat Cannoneers versus Team Janusus. I believe that's another French team. I'm not sure actually. Yeah. Could be. We might have to ask our professional French person. <laughs> professional French person. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> also known as 42. <clears throat> Not French. Not French, okay. <laughs> He's saying the team name is not French. The French team is NPC. I mean, I, I know NPC is French team, but this is have more than one. <clears throat> All right. Well, here we're getting ready for the next round. Team Boat Cannoneers. Eaton, Tar, and Taiju versus Team Genesis, Raya, Kura, and Lambus. <clears throat> and Eaton wants to remove the 20 minute. <laughs> of course he does, so that if 20 minutes passes and he's the last one left, he can solo the rest of everyone else. And he wants to add a loud <clears throat> target self. Yeah. <laughs> Such a larrikin. Oh, you like this? <laughs> Let's do it. That was a fast transition. It that was. was good. Professional gamers here. Yeah, when when the lag stuff happens, it's, there's just so. There's nothing you can do about it, and it just throw, throws such a monkey wrench into things. <laughs> yes, 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 it does. Uh, fortunately, we don't have that right now. So 
So we are good to go. And we're off to the madness. Here we have Janusus. Here on team one, playing as the Warthog commander. You know it, you love it. Warthog hits hard. As they're playing against their opponents, Boat Cannoneers. Uh, the team, speaking of, the team I uh, predict will be victorious in today's tournament. Uh, Tar, Eaton, and Taichu. This is a stacked team. Yep. Uh, Taichu is a long time, like I'm going to say, well, one of the longest term forts players. Um, They're very experienced, including mod making and such. Eaton, easily the strongest forts player ever. In the and world. In the world, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and like by a by a substantial margin at that, which is imp which is a pr impressive in its own right. And then Tar, who I was going to say is up and coming, um, mm. Tar is one of the more experienced players of the Forts Amateur League. I expect them to perform extremely well in the upcoming Forts Pro League. I agree. Um, Tar does like to join us for our regular forts multiplayer days usually unbalances the team in one direction <laughs> i love him it's all right i don't i'm not yeah. frustrated every time <laughs> he means well though he can't help no, it's, it's it's all it's all good fun there's a, there's a reason why we don't do a whole lot of team balancing around around the uh, around the public lobbies is you can't it's you get all manner of player it's it's a good time all around. I, I I do genuinely I do genuinely love it. Curious to see the build order differences between the teams here. Uh, team two doesn't have a super standardized build. Which honestly isn't all that surprising for this map. But we do see some similarities between them. Uh, background basing out the back, um, very little structure, lots of turbine, or not turbine, but smokestack. Taichu going with some tricky stuff here. Uh, this is a tech we discovered on battleships, but works outside of battleships if you have a really big boat. Taichu's going with the I want to build a big boat strategy. I'm that, curious that as to what... Placement is <laughs> tai Chi's stack placement. Uh, yes. Yes, Tai Chi's stack placement is... That's unusual. It is. Uh, it's, it's what I was mentioning about the, um, the battleship's placement. Because mm. just like turbines, how you do rear turbines, that they only check mm -hmm. a certain amount of width. It's the same thing here. They yep. only check a certain amount of height. So you could just build them low enough and then build tall enough that the, you could hard wall them in from above. Yeah. You just have to build really, really, really big. And Taichi's yeah. doing that. Yeah. It's a good strat. Especially on this map, because the rear board, rear fort has to um, has to build quite tall in order to be effective. So, I mean, if you're going to build, build if you're going to build tall, you may as well build tall. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Eaton, at the back. Yeah. Unsurprising to me is going aircraft. Um, yes, I, he's going to test test the theory we were talking about before. I kind of expect him to get a second runway, uh, a second mm. runway, and then just more aircraft and upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, compare this to Team One, which struggling. Uh, struggling, I think, is a good word. They've got the basics. Yeah. All uh, right. Uh, they got. Certain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's some fundamental <clears throat> issues here. Uh, Kuro just sold off all their energy economy. Um, they also haven't reformatted the boat to support things really. Uh, let's see. They do have heavy weapons tech, so that's a good start, but they need to get weapons placed. Um, 
Lambos building cannons. Oh boy, that's gonna be... Doesn't have a proper door. I'm genuinely surprised oh. that cannon's physically capable of hitting anything. That thing is so deep set behind. <laughs> okay. But, uh... Passes through Taichu's background bracing without causing damage. Hmm. Deck gun? Oh, it just... Yeah. The uh, point-blank deck cannon is devastatingly effective. Um, the only player that can meaningfully defend against that is Kurama, or the forward-most player, whoever that forward-most player is, just due to the low angle at which those cannons are coming through. And um, deck guns, they hit really hard. There's the aiming shot and then the kill shot. There it is. And... There we go. <laughs> Team 1 has no anti-air, so... I guess <clears throat> why not just launch your, launch your aircraft? A bit of a friendly fire incident. Taking out some of the ants here. Eaton detects weakness, an undefended core, and down they go. Raya falls. <laughs> Explosive shotguns. Wait. Yep. You don't see that every day. Yeah. Huh. That uh went right over the head of a flak. Alright, so how long does Lambos survive this I'd say one more volley yeah that sounds about right to me. <laughs> yeah that's lethal death from above not even an attempt at answer air. that hurts no that hurts a lot <clears throat> well as a uh, Boat Cannoneers rins this round. Yep. All right. So we're going to be swapping sides, setting a new map, sending them off to round two. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> um this is one we haven't seen in a while. But I love to see it. Uh we have oh, yeah. the vanilla big boat itself. Honestly, I feel like battleships, the modded one should just mm -hmm. be the official one. <laughs> it does seem like it, isn't it? <laughs> like, I, I know you guys it, it... did a good job at, re at creating something similar in feel to it with Leviathan, mm. but it's the original, though. Yeah, there's something about it, right? Yes. All right, we're ready. Off to round two.
Time's up. Let's do this. So, this is Leviathan. This is a co-op style map where all three players control the same fort, which is hilarious <laughs> and awesome. Uh, you guys may recognize the style in that it is something that we do a lot of in our in our live streams. Um, it is worth noting that this is not the same battleships map. While similar, not quite the same. It starts with a little bit more economy, um, but it's a bit smaller boat. It also starts with less. It starts with less stuff. Uh, so you'll see that the players will have to be doing a lot of uh, reconstruction around here. But they aren't selling of off as much as they once were. Yeah, they're going to swing that even further still. They're just trying to get it out from up on top because it's it's super vulnerable up there. It's very hard to defend up there. Very hard to defend up there. Oh, they're leaving it there. Brave. That's hmm. fine. Oh boy. Is this what they're going for? Starting it out with the air starting out with the aircraft carrier it would seem. Mm. Looks like Team 2 is actually keeping up pretty well here. Um, they're substantially behind in the economic development, but they're keeping up with their technology. Yeah, they're they're on par with the technology placement. They are behind on the economy placement. And they are also floating money, which leads me to believe they're chatting too much. As they are bantering in chat with each other and the other team. So there, it's all good spirit over here. It's just... Their, their APM's a little low for what they're trying to do. For all the smack they're talking. Uh, Taichu found the... Uh, found the energy production button. <laughs> I think what's... Uh, when I watch the original battleships, part of the, the charm of it is the selling off of the existing structure. Mm -hmm. If rush that happens at the beginning... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like that doesn't that's doesn't exist in this version, right? Right. Mind you, this is meant to be, I guess, more competitive, so to speak. <laughs> well, I don't know if competitive is the. Uh, it mm. is certainly easier to certainly easier to get stable because it starts stable. Mm. Put it that. We'll put it that way. I do prefer battle the uh, the battleship battleship, uh, mm. just because of the like what you said. There's there's a lot. There's this rush to try to restructure everything, and there's a yes. It's larger, and there's just it's more grand, and there's just generally more going on with it. Whereas this is fine. Mm. It doesn't have the same charm. But it's fine. Has anybody ever... Has anybody just taken that map and dropped it in water? I haven't actually looked. Oh, that's the one we usually play. No, the, I thought you were talking about the original one that's in on land. No, 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 no. Uh, when, well, when High Seas was first dropped, that was the first thing oh, that I happened. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 of course. I, uh, the same... It was King Benja. Yeah, actually. I see. The same, he transferred he, it, yeah. He just copy-pasted it over to the water and just let it go. And it's, we've yep. been using that ever since. <laughs> I see. Okay, I get it now. So it's, uh... He's good. 
They're floating so much. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, team two has, for perspective, has floated two thousand four hundred twelve metal, whereas uh, team one has floated one hundred and six, which is a substantial difference. And there's the second aircraft carrier, the second air runway. Kind of surprised to see Team 1 not revealing their cannons or, uh, already. Uh, kind of expected... Uh, it, it's... We're at six and a half minutes now. Uh, sorry, no. Five and a half minutes now. So the cannons are coming online. We do see the upgrades coming in from the economy. Uh, team 1 upgrading all those. Team 2 hasn't finished developing their first layer of income yet. Team 1 is not going to be keeping up. Uh, team 1 is it, it's, it's not in the same world here. We have a plus 131 metal per second for Team 1, whereas plus, 30, uh, plus 74 for Team 2. It's, um, the discrepancy here is massive. Like, it's mm. huge. I think Team 2 is trying to do standard tier threes and portal tier threes simultaneously it's an interesting decision if that's what's happening uh, portal tier threes are happening we have a third air we have a third runway placed as well uh, for team one so if you were wondering if the cooldown period for the runway did it does anything uh there's 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 the answer to your question um oh one cannon. One cannon for the Magna Beam. Not sure where they were going with that. Maybe they were trying to go below? Bring it from under? You definitely need more than one cannon for that tactic. It's a good start. I do expect the aircraft, the uh, the air force, to fly here pretty soon. Hmm. We have a portal from Team One, which I believe. Wait, where does that where does that come from? It's just a return to sender. Okay, never mind. I think Team 1 is letting Team 2 live. I think is what's happening here. Oh, of course. <laughs> like, Team 1 could have been firing. Momentarily. So it's like Team 1 could have been firing on all cylinders for the past two-ish yeah. minutes. And, I think uh, they're going to unleash the mother of all airstrikes. I think, I think that's what's happening. Um... Uh. Another thing that indicates that the Team 1 is playing with them is the art piece that has been constructed um, on the rear of their ship. So that's probably related. Probably related, you know? Getting some Nighthawks thrown in there. Here we go. This is... Why are you like this? Oh. Is that a warning shot? There it is. Oh, and... Here comes the active. <laughs> oh, the Magna Beam and, actually oh, saving them. Yeah. Look at that. That's hilarious. Not anymore, though. Still. Yeah. Like, that was a lot of yep. damage, but that would have been so yeah. much worse if it wasn't for the magnet beam. Just taking yep. everything and sucking it into a black hole. <laughs> He's just like, how? <laughs> how did you survive that? Yep. I mean, half the shots just 
got eaten by the, uh, the magna beam just sat there until they expired or just detonated harmlessly to a single piece of wood. <clears throat> so that was interesting. Don't see that every day. Uh, that was a tactic we used to use a lot on the uh, land battleships map. Not so much here. Yeah, 42's point is saying uh, nukes are typically the uh, approach on the original battleships. Yes. Eating through the boats. One nuke at a time. Or, you know, five nukes at a time, one of the two. Whichever, whichever comes first. This man's adding a hat just to get some extra eco going. Uh, this is on reaction to uh, Team 2 developing Tier 3s. Oh, here we go. Yep. It's hitting. Yep. I mean, they got they got a hit. I mean, that's yep. what they could ask for. Yeah, I mean, if they hit the right spot, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> I don't even know what the right spot would be. Like where? Where could they uh, hit? I mean, if they hit some of the the aircraft ammo, possibly. But all the aircraft explosive. ammo is below yeah. three layers of metal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, Team 1 is very, very well defended it's, from such Tier yeah. 3 activities. It would be a lucky shot. I I don't even know where... I don't even think there is a lucky shot possible. Oh. <laughs> I mean, full total course around is a uh, way to handle that. Uh, that is a pa those are pass through portals, so here we go again. Oh, badly aimed. Please. Oh, oh, <laughs> they crashed. Core down. Okay. Uh oh, so we good. Okay, we're still good. Ethan's gotten rusty. He's crashing his planes <laughs> together. Yeah. Uh, but it will be a couple minutes before the uh, Air Force is ready to fly again. That Fordmost core is not long for this world. Hmm. Uh, team 2, I mean, they still have tier 3s. They still have all their tech for weapons. They still have uh, what economy they constructed. But I mean... Team 1 is building metal because they don't know what else to do. They're too rich. Come the giant bomb. Oof. And there goes another core. Oh boy, that almost took out the tier threes. Team 2 working on anti air to defend against some of those aircraft. Unfortunately, anti air are not particularly effective against cannons. 
Cannons are quite popular these days. More tier threes fired. One looks good, the second one absolutely does not look good. They were both bad. All right. Uh, team one developing in an, an, a whole company of mortars. Beautiful Nighthawk. Night Strike. More tier three. And they're not activating their uh, commander either. Oh, how did that happen? I believe that to be purposeful. Uh, okay. The purposes of uh, ending the game. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I'm what? not sure if it was uh, a team decision or not. I'm just watching the replay here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, someone <laughs> did that on purpose. Right. You can see they linked the portal. Oh, I see. To the front. Interesting. <laughs> well, there were. That was that. <laughs> Indeed. Well played. Uh, team one with a victory. Well played, Team Boat Cannoneers. So that will be bog ships versus boat cannoneers in that stage. But next is. Moto Pinder Circus versus Greenleaf. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's check out the bracket. MPC versus Greenleaf. This is a match that's going to be good. Uh, these these teams, I think, are about evenly matched. And, uh, well, we'll see how it works out. Yes. Yep. Yeah. This should be interesting. Ah, uh, yes. Let's go. So that's two teams in the tournament which are relatively new to the game, mm -hmm. which is cool. Uh, the last team, definitely more familiar with the game, but uh, very different. Less focus on winning, more focus on memes. Yeah. Which is a different way of going about things. Sure. You know, as long as they're having fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the end, these teams, 3v3 means, you know, there's, there's quite a few people required to make these tournaments happen. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's amazing that we get you know, this many people all in the focus at the same time, you know. <laughs> it... Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why the cat herding is so heavy many a times. Mm. It's, uh, I'm just happy we can get this together. Get us all some great games for everyone. Yeah.
Looks like we're about ready to go. Team MPC versus Greenleaf. Coming to you momentarily. I think uh, 42 is saying that this NPC is the, the French team. Yes, yes they are. Oh, they have pierogi in Poland. <laughs> I need to make some more pierogi. Oh, you nice. make them yourself? Like, yeah, yeah. From yeah. from scratch? Yes. Oh, wow. It's so tasty. I can imagine. Was NPC give it a buy round or their opponent not show up? Uh, their opponents did not show up. Uh, I believe two out of three of the players were unavailable for, during the first round, so they had to uh, concede that one. But now we're off. As here we have on the left hand side, it is Team Greenleaf. Team Greenleaf, you know him, you love him. Dranistian, Vicro, and Robo. Doing great work. Some of the more popular, one of the most popular teams here. In the, uh, well, one of the more popular Forts Pro League teams. Sticking together for the tournament. This is a great time. They're playing as the Overdrive Commanders. We'll get to see upgrades. Lots of economy to go with it. They're playing against their opponents, MPC. That's uh, Caraba, Pile Rule, and Goose Eagle. It's worth noting that Team 2 here, Team MPC, is playing as the Phantom Commander. Phantom Commander is the dirty, filthy cheese commander, and we love it. <laughs> I have no idea what they're planning on doing with this. Um, That's what we're going to change the description in in the game when you mouse over it. Dirty, filthy cheese commander. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we see, we as the spectators here see the cheese revealed. Yes. It's, uh, it's death. It's, they're just, they're just going to rapidly apply death in the general direction of the opponents. Nothing exceptionally cheeky or exceptionally out of out of hand. It's just uh, if they play this right, their Alpha Strike will remove Dranistian, and then they'll just work their way backwards. And that's just that's their plan. And uh, if they nail it, which they will be instigating here in about 10, 15 seconds, then they'll just kind of win. There it is. Oh. oh. Uh, Pile's is very well aimed. Gustigo's not so much. Uh, so they missed the, as a oh. team, they missed the Alpha Strike. But it's yep. going to take Team 1 some time to react accordingly. And they yep. should be able to follow up with a few extra volleys here. A few extra volleys have a great chance of removing Drinistian in the lot. I see the Ancy wow. is just starting to come online. And... It's not enough. The 
Yeah, there's just enough ants here for Team 1 to keep the mortars at bay. Alright then. Let's see, Team 1 selling off their mortars. So that, while it did good damage to Dranistian, uh, did not do a whole lot to slow down the other two. And Team 2 definitely spent more on their offense than they did in damage. So that, actually, despite the damage Dranistian took, I do credit Team 1 with coming out of the advantage here. And that mm. engagement. You can see for perspective, Robostos here. Robo here has a cannon a quarter, quarter of the way done compared to Pile, whose heavy weapons tech is only halfway done. And Ghost Eagle, whose heavy weapons tech munitions plant is just finishing up right now. Like, that's... That's a massive slowdown for mm. what is not nearly enough damage. <clears throat> it's the uh, sort of alpha strike gamble that you take. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the record, this is why on maps like Vanilla, things like mortars are so incredibly popular. Because all of the angles and power levels are already pre-known and mapped out. To a point where you just build the mortars in this exact position, and then you put them at this exact angle, and all of the mortars will land on the core just directly. Um, it's devastating. So you don't have instances like this one where half of the mortars miss the intended target. Oh, oh, wow. Dranistian that was cool. replies with a short range <laughs> night knock. Um, yeah. Oh, Pele might just be oh. dead here. Oh, wow. Oh, he catches it. Oh, boy. Uh... Well, that was intense. Pile getting fully disconnected from his base, uh, managing to reconnect it with his core barely moving whatsoever, which is not something you see every day. Dranistan dealing way more damage than I expected with that. Uh, looks like Vicro in the rear is about to start opening fire with their deck cannons. Robo has already opened fire with their standard cannon. It's going to be bringing up a second cannon here in a moment. Uh, Ghost Eagle is constructing weapons of their own. Looks like they're about to... They're completing up one standard cannon now. The second one is uh, two-thirds of the way complete. Fire beam plasma beam onto Dranistian. Dranistian face tanks it. More cannons running into Pile. But no massive damage received. Energy shield, clutch. Nice to see that make an appearance. You don't see it very often these days. No, no. Ghost Eagle relying on the phantom ability to move weaponry around. Constructing the weapons in the rear, but bringing them up to the expansion when they need to be fired. A nice hit into Gust Eagle, but no significant damage dealt. Here we go. Oh. Wow. Close range, <laughs> but not close enough. Yeah. Nighthawk shut down instantly. Team 2 activating their commander ability, cloaking themselves that they may remain unseen. This is a, a good match. This is... People that know what they're doing. <laughs> yes, that's what I was saying. I was incredibly looking forward to this because these teams are quite evenly matched. And they know what they're doing. More cannons out of Team 1. 
more deck guns out of Team 1. Team 1's solution to the problem is just more firepower. Which is, uh, it's a good solution, just, you know, in general. Ooh, almost a door snipe. Is it still a return to sender for just doesn't return to sender, but instead just returns in general <laughs> direction. A uh, a portal off the front of Pele's base, sending yeah. cannons back, scattered into the void. Yeah, return to orbit. A devastating hit, cannon shell from above, up and over, taking out Robo's cannon. Or at least one of them. What are you... Okay. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> He's just trying to get a very tall... Uh, very tall... Buzz stuff. Yeah. Beautiful flak bait. Yep. He just needs to bait one more time and then launch the Nighthawk. Now that the, uh, the flak, the sniper is taking out the flak. Here comes the big shot. That shotgun did way less than I expected it to. No damage over here. Dranistine has two Nighthawks. He's gonna have a third. I think he's waiting on the... Uh, I'm sorry, he's gonna have a fourth. I think he's just waiting on the fourth to make sure that he 100% kills his opponent. Like, he's <laughs> probably gonna overkill it. Alright, surely that's enough Ansier bait. Like, they... You're not gonna get a better chest than now, Dranistian. Okay, well, yeah. I guess... Uh, is there I a reason he didn't fire? I don't know why he didn't fire, actually. Interesting. Okay. Those cannons hitting Robo are devastating, and Team 1 needs to react, or, t or uh, they're going to lose a player. That's just what's happening. All right, all the shields have been used. All the flak has been fired. You gotta fire, you gotta launch the aircraft <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Dranistian, what are you doing? There goes Robo. Your time is running out. They're knocking your players out. Dranistian, you gotta go. <laughs> There's deck cannons flying. It's all the anti anti air you could ever want. Okay. <laughs> He's just got another. The cannons are singing. Vicro is not gonna be long for this world if those cannons keep landing. Like that's far too many cannons for Vicro's eco to keep up with. Oh, the buzz saw. I mean, those are great energy shields, but like, those are very, very well done. Like, I approve. Deep inset, oh. solving problems from above.
<sighs> um, trying to think. Is like, is, is this is this one gonna go to timer? I don't think so. I think Team Two's got enough damage output on the fields that if it gets close oh. to timer, Team One's just gonna fall. Like Team One isn't in immediate danger of just losing all of their cores right now, but they're not living long enough to survive the next six and a half minutes. That's for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I don't understand what to... Here we go. There it is. There you go. Uh, Vitro, he unfortunately, yeah, he left did it not survive. Yeah. Uh, didn't quite hit Pile's core, but it did a great deal of damage. And that's a uh, a good start, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a good start. Uh, definitely got rid of those energy shields, so that's uh, that's nice. Um, unfortunately, without, without Robo's deck guns, there's not going to be nearly enough bait for the... Uh, the Ancier. Uh, Drenistian's just kind of gonna... He's letting it go. Yeah. He's, uh, it's understandable. This is... Uh, he's conceding this one. MPC wins round one. <laughs> the immediate friendly fire. <laughs> Good lord. Round one goes to team MPC. Well done, team two. <laughs> what you would give it to be in their voice chat. Yeah, I would... I mm. genuinely want to know what was going on with that. I noticed all of Team 1 is in the replay. It makes me wonder if they're like, Hey, you! What's you, what you going on? I'm gonna ask. May it hmm. interesting. Trinistian is suffering some uh, internet issues. Oh, right. That so maybe have, that that's why... There I was, was going to say that might have been related. He just wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we were all like, why aren't you shooting? Like the entire like, internet was saying, yeah. shoot all at yeah. once. <laughs> and his internet was like, uh, no. <laughs> no. That, that, that might be a... Uh, that, that would make sense. Okay. I understand now. Internet connectivity issues, which is a reoccurring trend today. Hmm. Interesting. Couldn't get, maybe you couldn't get a, a proper angle on it. He says he couldn't launch the Nighthawks because the tower bracing. <laughs> Technical problems. 
Now he can't join the lobby. Okay, so we just have to remake the lobby. Not a big deal whatsoever. No, no, just typical tournament uh, organization stuff. <laughs> mm Just about ready to go once again. Curious, could planes go through a portal? Yes, planes can go through a portal. They indeed can do that. But it looks like the players are just about ready, so we are uh, going to be starting up momentarily. go off to round two of this match here we have on the left hand side team mpc moto pinder circus playing as the phantom commander it is dirty filthy cheese once more playing a, uh, facing off against their opponents team green leaf as the hurricane commander different choice this time uh, hurricane commander has a passive bonus to all device construction speed, which is just generally pretty okay, uh, but not super impactful. Uh, its active ability is faster reload speed. Much more impactful during the uh, moments of high combat activity. I am curious to see how each team goes about things. Um, MPC is doing the same strat. The question is, do they have their angles down packed? Are they ready to... Uh, what did they snipe out a player? It's worth noting that uh, Team NPC is specifically building their fort such that they don't reveal that they're doing this. Um, 
it is going to be extremely difficult for Team 2 to recognize that they're about to get pummeled. Without doing some active scouting with a sniper or something of the sort. And uh, it's almost too late because here we go. Gosh, this is just <laughs> two minutes and 15 seconds in. It's just death comes. Oh, and they make the shot. Wow. A beautiful alpha strike. <laughs> and Dranistian falls. You see, that's what they were trying to do the first time. Uh, it didn't work yep. out for them. And now it's just free-for-all fire to the second player in line. Looks like Ghost Eagle struggling for energy production. Uh, team 2 getting some... Uh, Getting some Ancier online. Snipers from Team 1 clear out some of the machine gunners. It's going to make Team 2's life even more difficult than it already is. Mortars taking out machine gunners. You hate to see it. So for those wondering what this is supposed to look like, this is what this this is what this strategy is supposed to look like. It's um, an exceptionally rough experience for Team Two right now. Uh, MPC is at an extreme advantage right now. Okay. Now the question is, what does Team NPC do from here? Uh, they do have the option to just keep firing, uh, but that generally doesn't work out very well. Uh, they need to expand, scale upwards, and move on with their life to go do something else. Uh, as it seems that is what they are doing, uh, Team 2 has two players that are moving on to later tech. One is staying here and applying more mortars. Uh, to be clear, all of the players in Team 1 are still firing mortars. They are not stopping with the mortars. They are just not expanding the mortars, whereas... Uh, okay, now they are all sight. They are all moving on from life now. They've cloaked. No more firing. No more mortars. It's all resold. I mean, simultaneous selling. That's something you don't see every day. Yeah. I wonder if that would be better done sequentially. Um, I have you know no I mean? idea. Like, I I know what you're ta I know what you're saying. I just don't know mm. if it would be the case that it could be done. That there would be some substantial benefit to it sequentially. Um, doing it all at once as early as possible just means you get into the heavier tech faster. Mm. Um, for everyone simultaneously. But yeah, I agree. Obviously, it's there is that... some benefit to keeping any amount of pressure on your opponent. Yeah, that was exactly what I was thinking. Is that they take turns, you know? I would think <clears throat> maybe having one player stay on mortars would be okay hmm. um, for an extra thirty seconds, because once everyone stops the mortars, there's not going to be enough mortars for anyone to get anything done so the mortars will be a waste and they will rapidly become a waste but if you leave one player on mortars it'll delay that time for a while and cause the opponents to react because it'll take it'll be difficult for the other team to recognize that the mortars have stopped because technically the mortars haven't stopped they've just stopped for all intents and purposes and that'll delay the opponent's um, reaction to it for some time See, we notice Team 2 here no longer really has ants here. Or at least they've, they're blocking it and they're not developing more kind of stuff. They're working on other things now. 
If they had mortars active for some longer time, then the time it would take for Team T to recognize they no longer need AA would be greater. And in doing so, mm. give their two teammates extra time to rush weapons before their opponents move to catch up. Let's get a little bit, a little bit of a head start. Uh, but that's only going to last like two volleys, maybe. So that's like 30 seconds, and then you move on from there. I will say, though, very satisfying Alpha Strike from Team MPC. Mm. Clinical. Clinical is a great word for it. Mm. Standard cannon shell from MPC. Their weapons have come online. Oh no. They just recognized that Team 2 has sold off so much of their AA that there's just about nothing to stop this Nighthawk from flying across. It's, um, uh, it's gonna be a disaster. Yeah. Ghost Eagle is intact. Didn't take substantial damage from that. Uh, a light dusting, uh, just peeling the top layer off of his fort kind of deal. Yeah, they've got some good defense on MPC. Mm-hmm. All of those mortars were replaced with even more machine guns. Here we go. Oh, a bad swing aim. and a miss. Yeah, I hate to see it. Team MPC cloaking. Not sure why. Probably no real reason to. No reason not to. Just to mess with their opponents. This is literally a 3v2 at this point. So Team 1's got the advantage in every direction. Uh, they have no particular need to do anything. Uh, they can just wait for the next 10 minutes and they will win on timer. Alternatively, uh, they don't have an exceptional need to rush for anything. Uh, they can just get what they want in the eventually time scale, and it'll work out for them. All they have to do is be very careful to not get critted by something. Team 1 using Phantom to uh, bring their cannons forward. Wow. Solid ends here. Here we go. That's a lot of ends here. Holy smokes. Yeah, yeah that was effective. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> Here it goes again. Uh -oh. Oh, but the double shotgun, yep, it's enough to clear the skies. 
Very well done out of Robo, keeping himself alive this time. Uh, the shotgun pays with its life. But it did its job, and that's what matters. I think I saw a uh, orbital get fired. You, uh, I didn't notice it fire. I did notice it get placed. Um, it was Pile in the rear who placed it. Yeah. Yep. Yep, okay. Well, that'll be one to watch Interesting for. use of these uh, smokestacks in front. Using it like beefy wind turbines. Expensive <laughs> defenses, but I mean, Team 2 isn't doing anything with heavy weapons. At least not significantly, so. There it is. Oh, oh. Oh, ho! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Vicro saves Robo there. Robo's so <laughs> close to getting lasered from space. <clears throat> Team 2 does have a substantial amount of a Conway. Yeah, nice. EMP. Pretty strictly bait at this stage of the game. There's so many shotguns, guys. There's so many shotguns. Yep. It's just skeet shooting all over again. Hmm. Let's see. There's not a whole lot of, I'm going to say, craziness going around. Uh, team 2 is, they're doing what they can, which is fire deck cannons and hope Team 1's AA fails them. Um, yeah. Team 1 is in no, they don't have any particular urgency for doing anything in particular. Huh. Uh, so... I like Team 2's attempt at sending shots to the rear this time. Yeah, the rear fort that's is a work. bit less is a bit more vulnerable to this. Oh. Yeah, that, that was, was a still much going. better strike. Yeah. Much better. Yes. Actual wow. damage dealt. Uh, that's that hit really hard. Oh, oh but the howitzer feet. lands. That's <laughs> that's peak bad. And this is looking like potential death here. Yep. Oh. Shotgun. Uh oh. Oh, and it landed. Uh oh. <laughs> yep. Wow. There goes uh, Robo. They will be missed. And Death here comes another above. one. Okay, oh, nice. well, <laughs> this is the end. Oh. Not quite. Uh, Vicro survives, uh, which I did expect. But <laughs> more importantly, Vicro loses everything. So there's nothing to stop this from happening. And, um, hmm. Well, so, Greenleaf held off quite well, you know. I mean, they were a man down for a long time. Oh, yeah. Squirrel. Why are you like this? Yeah, uh, oh. Greenleaf, I mean... They held off for a while, but they, they didn't really have any significant threats. Really? Uh, I think he's just trying to get out of his... He's, he's yeah, just that was... It happen. 
I thought that was the Hail Mary. Yeah. <laughs> No, Nighthawks are surprisingly difficult to uh, land those precision shots into. It's art time! <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> Inspiration hits at the strangest times. <laughs> 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 oh, the Nighthawk misses again. Why are you like this? Is this what they did on the Titanic? <laughs> uh, it's going down. Let's make it look pretty. There's there the howitzer. <laughs> well done. Well done. Team MPC wins it again. You love to see it. Well, that was satisfying. I like that match. I like that match a lot. It was a very yeah, good match. Yeah, I agree. All sorts of stuff. All sorts of good use of all the variety of weapons. Yes. It makes me happy to see it every time. Oh, but a laser is way too strong. Eh. It is it is very strong, but there's a reason you don't see it in a lot of these games. It's just not that strong. It's, it's also hard to pull off. And that you is know, exactly the, why it's not so strong. Yeah. But if you if you if you do get it, then you get the reward of some, you know, punishing the the target. Incredible damage. All right, we're getting set up for the next match. Bog ships versus boat cannoneers. This one will be another good match, I think. I, I still f heavily favor boat cannoneers, um, but this one will be a great, a great match, I believe. A good showing, nonetheless. Yep. Shouldn't be a walk in the park. Should hopefully be similar, as you just said, to the previous match, balance-wise, or I guess team matchup-wise. Yes. All right. Uh, we're still missing a couple players here. Oh no. This is a very map. <laughs> We, um, there's a bit of some changes happening on uh, the Earthwork Games front. Um, we've, one of our uh, uh, colleagues, uh, Scottle, is uh, moving on uh, to his own project. So, which is a bit, uh, a bit sad to see him go, but oh. pretty exciting to see him uh, start his own game uh, called Delvirium. Uh, which, uh, when as that comes together, I'll uh, I'll share some links to it and stuff with people. But yeah, I'm and uh, yeah, um, it's kind of a um, uh, cross between uh, Terraria, Minecraft, and Stardew Valley kind of thing. It's a pixel art game. So um, yeah, wish him uh, well. We wish him all all the best of luck with his game and thank. Scott for 
all his many years of helping forts, which, uh, yeah, he's been instrumental in in um, getting a lot of different features in the game. And yeah, he's he's been awesome. And uh, I don't think he's going away permanently. I think we'll be able to, you know, get him to help out with, uh, help us out every once in a while. Um, and um, and luckily we've found somebody else to kind of take his place, so our uh, productivity won't won't change in the transition, which is good. But yeah, it's kind of interesting stuff going on. That is quite interesting. It always feels it's always bittersweet to see a colleague, longtime colleague, uh, move on, but. It's also yeah nice. It's like hey, go on to do cool things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and because uh, he's going to start up his own thing, which could become a thing like Forts became. You know, you never know, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And um, uh, yeah, and the new guy. Uh, well, that's ju it's just so early days. We just wait till that all settles down before we, you know, um, introduce him to everybody. Um, but yeah, so it's. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, we a new a new perspective from on the inside of how things are working in the game, and then uh, and seeing um, Scott will start his own his own baby. <laughs> Interesting. Excellent. I'm sure it'll be a while before we get a lot of information or, you know, good information off of it. But uh, I actually think he's he's planning on announcing it in probably the next month or two. So I'll share oh, links. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay, then yes please. I am interested in links. Yeah. I like links. <laughs> speaking of uh speaking of things, uh, we're off to the next round. Boat cannoneers versus bog ships. Here on the left-hand side, it's Boat Cannoneers, Taichu, Tar, and Eaton playing as the Moonshine Commander. Moonshine Commander is one we don't often see, uh, ever. I'm uh, not sure why they've chosen it. I'm not sure what strategy they're going for that's going to utilize it. Uh, but they're playing against their opponents, Benzene, Slack, and Meister. These are teams and players who are quite well versed in the video game in general. <laughs> and on this map, uh, we're seeing core swing from both sides. We're seeing slightly different takes on how to do turbine tech here. We have team two insetting their energy production on the right, whereas uh, team one on the left just out there on top. I'm partial to this, how they're doing it here on Team 1, uh, because it adds a little extra defense between the core and <clears> the <throat> top layer. Defend against Tier 3 kind of stuff. I'm unsurprised, uh, not surprised at all, to see uh, aircraft carrier coming out for Team 1. Team 2 developing all the tech, just as Team 1 is developing all the tech. No reveals on how Team 2 is going to handle things just yet. But I expect it to be the standard fare. You're going to see cannons off of a tower in front. Like you could have a cannon spire. Then you have some indirect weapons in the rear. Uh, for Team 1, this is looking like it's going to be aircraft. Uh, for Team 2, not yet revealed. Uh, tier 3s are quite popular. In fact... It's looking like it's going to be Tier 3s. Uh, so we're going to get probably Tier 3s out of Team 2 and uh, Aircraft out of Team 1. Not sure you could come out on top of this one. Uh, I suspect it's going to be the Aircraft, but if the game goes long, then Tier 3s might, might make a comeback here. All right. It will certainly be a couple minutes before the excitement kicks off. <clears throat> and 
No, maybe the uh, moonshine is strictly for the anti-portal. And portals are... Portals can be an issue on this map just because of the massive economic capabilities. Looks like a bunch of standard cannons for Team 1. Buzzsaw is doing buzzsaw things. We're seeing tier 3s out of team 1 as well. Interesting. Tier 3s out of team 2s. We're going to we're going to get some some pretty heavy tier 3 action in this match. Good to know. Double fire beam from team one is ready to go. Uh, it's just going to be some suppressive fire. Fire beams out of team two as well. Very similar builds all around for everyone involved. <laughs> the tier three layout for both teams is not dense oh <laughs> well uh that is honestly not the worst thing that could have happened you know as much as the thunderbolts when they ignite they don't drop their bombs the um the bombs they drop don't deal that much damage anyways so going kamikaze not the worst case scenario This is a reoccurring problem for Team 1. And it doesn't stop being a problem. Oh gosh! <laughs> Someone's getting yelled at. Like, why are you firing the beams? I will say, that EMP cannon is doing reasonable work just by shutting down the opponent's cannons. I can't sleep on the EMPs. Alright, so it looks like Team 1 is refocusing onto dense Tier 3s. Uh, this is slowing down their Tier 3 production substantially. As you can see, they have 1.5 with a third started to swing. Whereas over here they have, they just have three. And so the tier threes oh. are out and singing. Is Zaltvek in chat? Zaltvek is currently live on Twitch where you can see him broadcast these very same matches but in the German tongue. We have a pair of fire beams on the deep deep left here for team one. These are strictly for anti tier three treatment. Tier three is everywhere. Uh, team two has not yet defended their tier three cannons, which leaves them vulnerable to being uh, blown up. A heavy hit. Oh. Oh, wow. Multiple heavy hits. A tier 3 pens deep through the rear, hitting the economy. And also the Nighthawk lands and does critical damage to the cannon platform. The fire beams are attempting to take tier 3s out of the sky. We see the empowered cannon overpen the entire base taking out a mine in the process or you know a propeller tier threes hit very hard i have a question from chat ever considered having skins colors 
as an option for forts, like something similar to wood colors. Hmm. I think they're asking for like micro what transactions. Skin? Yeah, we're not a fans of that, I'll be honest. There you go. Ooh, triple tier three landing at approximately the same space, penetrating their defenses and getting all the way down to their economy, scratching the core, bringing it down to 82%. Don't see that every day. Oh dear. The triple oh, massive damage. Wow. It hit one of their battery clumps. Yep. Secondary explosions rattled through. Um, it only damaged superstructure in the secondary explosion. So no, nothing game breaking, but it d is shutting down their energy capacity for some time and will reduce their alpha strike potential, or at least their group fire potential until that's reconstructed. More heavy hits. The splash on that uh, EMP is substantial. It is. It looks like Team One's almost ready to refire the aircraft. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, all the tier threes got burned out of the sky, and <laughs> here fly the aircraft. And there it goes through. And you thought that the cool down would be enough to stop it from just constantly firing and overwhelming. <laughs> that was off of a single aircraft launcher, too. The tier 3s fly once again. Uh, empowered tier 3s for coming out from team two so we're going to see some uh, deep penetration landing on team one's fort here it pushes deep but hits nothing instead inside the anti synergies Cannons on both sides, a door snipe. Team 1 loses two cannons to a single door snipe. Painful, very painful. And here comes the aircraft once again. It drops, it lands. Ooh. Takes chunks out of the doors, but um, it doesn't actually, doesn't actually break anything. That's it, the doors don't come online, aren't reconstructed in time. Team 2 has officially lost all of their standard cannons, although they have left Tier 3s. Uh, team 2 starting to work on an aircraft carrier of their own. Let's see, Taichu seems to be the one in charge of keeping all of their uh, Tier 3s on lockdown. The opponent's Tier 3s on lockdown. Mm. Took out some of his own too. Uh, more than a few times, really. Mm. That's uh, that's been a reoccurring trend. Team two has lost one of their tier threes along the way. I'm not sure if they're going to try reconstructing that. They do have the space to do so.
The triple tier three Ooh. out of team yeah. one is devastating. And they're making more, by the way. Oh. oh. <laughs> the tier threes. They ignite and they get ignited by the fire beam and they slammed yeah. down on the tier and tiers tier threes. Uh, team two's tier threes do survive. Uh, they take some heavy hits, but they do survive. Bog Ships is taking a beating. It's slow, it's gradual, they're hanging on, but they are taking a heavy beating. This is where those Tier 3s come in. Just the ability... The thing about Tier 3s, they aren't exceptionally powerful on their own, they're just regular cannons worth of damage. The thing that makes them Ooh. devastating is they come in from inc uh, unpredictable angles. And you, it's the, necess the necessity of defending the entirety of the top of your fort at all points in time is cost prohibitive. So just having tier threes pounding away means that the opponents have to constantly be sealing holes everywhere with complete and unmitigated discipline to its maximum integrity. And that's just something you can't generally afford while doing anything else. And so tier threes, most of the time, you just let them go. You just say, ah, I'm just going to take the risk and just hope that it doesn't hit the chink in this particular set of armor. Mm. And, you know... Did they lose... Sometimes yeah, they lost their runway. Uh, Bog ships, they, they lost... They've had to rebuild it, I think. Uh, it's, on, it's behind oh, their it was, first core. Ah, yeah, yeah. At the base of the spire, what was yeah. once the cannon spire. But yeah, with the with team one going up to six tier threes, that's gonna be a lot of just constant hammering from the top. Constantly having to reconstruct everything, or just accept they take damage. And well, taking cannon damage is not acceptable, as you guys know. It doesn't work out very well. It's just four cannons, front facing cannons just to add into it. Swing and a miss. Jeez. Oh dear. It's not getting better for Team 2. Ooh. He did actually burn two out of three of those down. That was, uh, worth it. Barely, but worth it. The forward cannons are digging through. All that's all that uh, team one needs is something to actually finish it off. The cannons, the forward-facing cannons, are attritioning. The tier threes are also attritioning. All they need is just something to actually break through and deal the damage. Because if anything hits, it's uh, if anything hits bog ships right now, they're just gonna crumble. The thing is. Team one isn't able to land their killing blow. If they were able to, if they were to swap up to nuke launchers, um, that might do it. Um, be traditional cannons, maybe howitzers. Howitzers would be an, would be a good option as well. Oh, the standard oh. cannons are finally doing enough damage to break through the despair. Team 2's Cannon Spire falls. It didn't have cannons on it, it just had anti-air. Uh, but the Spire has fallen. Oh, here oh, we go. Oh no. Team 1 has Are just about no anti-air. Uh. The thing is, Team 1 has enough fire beams to cycle in infinitely. 
And the tier 3 takes out the, the aircraft launcher, so team 2 won't get an opportunity to find out. The cannons, oh, the spire has fallen. <laughs> the eco mm. is vulnerable. There's not nearly enough anti air anymore. Sixty seconds left. One minute left. <laughs> well, I think we know how this one's going to end. Uh, it's going to end to timer, and uh, with team one victory. The tier threes are just devastating every time. Yeah. Hey, backward flag. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it works, it works. <clears throat> yep. Well played. Yep. That's uh, team one with the victory. Quite a substantial lead at that. I mean, this is an order of magnitude, a factor of 10 more damage for team one than team two. That was just an incredible amount of damage. Well played. Getting set up, ready for round two. I will say, it is fun to uh, to watch the battleship style maps. Yeah, I agree. The um, the the strategy is evolving. You know what I mean? It's interesting to see how people are playing it now compared to even the last tournament, you know? Subtle subtle differences, you know, the... Uh, well, in that scenario was... Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Firebeam defending T3 attacks. I haven't seen that too much. I've seen, now I've seen it a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that's, that's the... Cool. Uh the standard way to defend against tier threes on this map. Mm. Um, because this map is so... You'll see it sometimes on the larger, like the 4v4 high seas maps, where it's just all boats. Sometimes one player will go dedicated to tier three, and then you'll just have another player dedicated to anti-tier three, with, you know, three fire beams or something. But... On battleships where tier threes are kind of expected, Fire beams are also used to mitigate that. All right. So, Deeth, I'm just looking at what uh, King Benja is saying in chat. He's saying he prefers non-portal T3s because they're more accurate. Do you think that's the case? Yes. Well, uh, I th yes, that is the proper way to describe it. Um, the reason for that is the portals added extra... They, they disconnect the direction of, your aiming the, of you aiming the cannon to the direction the cannon goes. Because of that, when the base deforms, all base deformation also applies to the cannon's aim. And so, mm. if you're aiming in one spot, the base deforms, the cannon is now misaligned. 
so it's it's mm. inaccurate because it it's literally not aiming in the right in the same position it was last time despite you sending the cannon shot in exactly the same angle uh, that doesn't happen with non portal tier threes because the last firing vector remains the same regardless of the cannon's rotation mm. let's yep. say if the base Makes deforms sense. and the cannon is still pointed upwards the cannons uh the cannon will still point to where it was aimed, even if the cannon itself was rotated. Like the, it will actually mm -hmm. rotate to uh, still point the same spot. So it's exactly, it is perfectly accurate. It's just, I mean, they still have the same level of imprecision. So mm -hmm. the shots still go wide, but at least it's more accurate to use the non-portal ones. Cause you don't have to worry. You don't have to include base deformation in the aiming. Uh, but here we are. Off to the next round. I don't know if you noticed this in the uh, in the release notes of the last patch, but we had to uh, uh, eat and discovered a bug where if you have too many metals, they they print off the edge of the screen. <laughs> yes, yes, I commented on that on a live stream earlier. <laughs> because I was like, oh my god, Eaton, why have you done this? And we had to fix that. So, Good lord. Uh, yeah, that was funny. Funny use of resources. <laughs> Too many metals. I do want to say, uh, Mateo with the crazy things, thank you, thank you, coming in with the support. I'm glad you enjoy. Yes, I'm aware we don't have... The alerts active and most chat interactions disabled for the purposes of these streams, or at least for the uh, tournaments, because we'll be focusing on the content and all the great games for you guys to enjoy. Yeah, the uh, I, th I thought that was hilarious. I commented on like, so you even broke it by being too good, too many medals. Too good. Yep. <laughs> this is funny to me. Uh, but here in this match, we have Team Bog Ships here on the left-hand side. Slack, Derbensine, and Meister. Playing as the Warthog Commander. One of the more popular commanders. Bonus damage for all your heavy weapons. No problems with that. No pro no 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 complexity, just more firepower. And they're bringing it to bear against their opponents. Team Boat Cannoneers. We have Tar, Taichu, and Eaton. They are playing as the Eagle Eye Commander. Eagle Eye Commander a little bit more nuanced. It allows you to double shot your weapons, which very effective. Um, doesn't give you more value per shot. You still have to wait for the reload time for both shots to reload before you can double shot. You still have to pay full price for them. It just allows you to land two shots before your opponent has an opportunity to repair in between, which is quite good, very effective. Great for timing attack type stuff. Or just deep penetrating your opponent's defenses when they're at least expecting it. I'm curious to see how they handle things. I'm guessing Team 2 being Team 2 is going to see some... Uh... Huh, actually, I'm immediately wrong. They're going for a mixed weapon set. Uh, we see Tar in the forwardmost base going for munitions plants. Eaton in the central base going for laser technology. And Taichu going for um, aircraft. I expected Taichu to go aircraft. Did not expect Eaton to go laser tech. And Tar is probably going deck guns. Huh. Okay. Interesting decisions. Uh, strong decisions, but interesting nonetheless. For Team 1, it looks like it's cannons, lasers, and cannons. Oh no, they're doing it again. It's the Magna Beam. Okay, 
So team one is going to go with the cannon focus firing onto a target with the magna beam strategy. Uh, we've seen that before. Kind of a meme strat, but it's also just really strong if they could pull it off. Um, we'll see if they could pull it off. Boat cannoneers, on the other hand, are playing something more standard. They're just going for every weapon type. And they're going to just hit their opponents with every weapon. That's, that's, what, <laughs> that's what they're going to do. Uh, statistically, very effective. Comes highly recommended. Eaton moving down to touch the water. I'm not actually sure if this map counts that as water. And I'm not sure if Eaton gets access to the smokestacks for touching that water. Taichu going on an adventure. Uh, expanding to the uppermost corner. Or at least trying to. Uh, trying to, yeah. Giving it the old college try. Yeah. Worth the effort if you can get there. Fire beam is doing fire beam thing. This man fully put a battery. I understand that was an accident. But man's <laughs> playing with fire. Oh no. Their really? whole strategy. I'm so sad. I wanted to see it. Uh. uh well, uh, Meister falls to a self-destruct, accidental collapse due to uh, too much gravity, too fat, too thick. Happens yeah. to the best of us. Mm -hmm. Here comes the cannon fire. Eaton taking splash damage directly. What's well, Eaton taking splash damage in its core? Uh, the aggressive and small frame of uh, Eaton's base means that any and all hits he takes to his front uh, directly splashes his core. Just because there's not enough space between the front of his base and his core to uh, prevent the splash damage from getting through. Eaton deciding doesn't want to take more splash damage is mass expanding to uh, prevent such splash damage from continuing. Duck gun lands. Team 2 going up to a bunch of cannons. And when I say a bunch, I mean it's already up at 6, 7 cannons. Which is a lot of cannons. Like, that's just a lot of cannons. Touching water is not the same as touching grass. Also, it does appear that it did give Eaton access to uh, boats tech. Yep, alright, well wow. it doesn't matter. Eaton just face tanking six cannons to the face. Uh, that's, yeah. There's not a whole lot of surviving that. Um, so he's gone. Rip Eaton. Uh, Eaton's remnant base, however, is being captured and saved! Yeah. Wow. Tar wow. now has double boat. Yep. you love to see it. Oof. So Tar actually happening. has an incredible <laughs> economy now. E Never e mind. Did. It's all gone. <laughs> Buzzsaw making it all go away. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> um, Taichu suffering a similar fate. Oh, wow. All right. Um, well, that even things up a bit. That's a good way to just. It's, yes, yes, it did. <laughs> um, I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. Closer the better. Oh, oh. Okay. That was a good shot. Um, yeah, I didn't expect Taichi's base to crumble like that. 
Uh, but it would seem Tai Chu has exploded dramatically. Uh, so Tai Chu is effectively out of the running here. All that's left is uh, Tar versus the world. Ooh. All right. Core is going down. Yep. There he goes. So Tar versus the world. Can he do it? Slack and Durbenzin. Um... Actually, in the front base versus front base matchup here, uh, I credit Tar with being at the advantage. Uh, the problem Tar is going to experience is obviously the cannons from above. Mm -hmm. uh, Durbensin is doing a great job of immediately restructuring his base to permit angled fire down there. And would likely, I would actually have said if Drebensin took even another 30 seconds to restructure, Tar probably would have just ended Slack. Or at least taken out his cannon spire. His cannon tower. Mm. Um... But, uh, Drebensin well, saw and decided to interact, yeah. get involved, and, wow. uh, he did it. Mass cannons out of Team Bog Ships yeah. takes a match, takes a round off of yeah. Boat Cannoneers. I gotta see what I, I gotta see Tai Chi's collapse again because that was gorgeous. Yeah. It was nice. Uh, this one, Tai Chi probably should have seen coming because, uh, really. Ballsy with it, I think is a good way to describe. I mean, you could you could say the same for Eaton as well, right? Like, that's a pretty exposed spot there, and he didn't start putting structure in front of his core until he had been tickled, so to speak, right? Yes. Beautiful. And uh, so that's that was the end of Tai Chu here. It was, uh, it was great. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, the score is one to one as we continue on in this, uh, in this matchup. And we're off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forts, where here we have on the left-hand side, it's Bog Ships, playing as the Warthog Commander, looking to get that bonus damage and all their cannon shells. A uh, Bog Ships team has been um, an acolyte of the cannon. Which I'm super into. You know, I'm a big fan of cannons. They've just been going up. They had, a, what, 11 cannons in a, in a match previous? Which is a lot of cannons. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You guys saw Eaton's base. His face got cannoned. Uh, just goes to show, doesn't matter how good you are, even if, you, if, you, if you're eating six cannons to the face, it's not going to last very long. Team Boat Cannoneers here on the right-hand side, playing as the Hurricane Commander. We have seen them choose this Hurricane Commander once before. This commander gives them bonus build speed, just generally more build speed. Also, 
It increases reload speed during the commander active. Eaton going on an adventure. Looking like he's reaching up to the stars to expand to the rearward expansion up on the hill. You gotta do a little bit of restructuring here, friend. There you go. <laughs> All right, you got it. You figured it out. actually knows um would you mind if i open up chat to uh, ask you guys ask you questions like directly if i were to say yeah sure Great. i will answer what i can or try to at least i'll say ask the dev anything would be the prompt for chat to uh <laughs> see how that goes And pick up a few questions between rounds. In terms of this match, we, unsurprisingly, we have cannons coming out of bog ships. Big fan. Uh, team 2, however, a bit more varied in their weapon selection. Deck of guns coming out of tar. We have lasers and it's going to be Nighthawks coming out of Eaton. So it should be fire beams and Nighthawks. Yeah, fire, fire beams and Nighthawks. Taichu looks like he wants to build cannons, but hasn't started building cannons yet, which is not usually how cannons are produced. Um, <laughs> it is definitely building cannons. Just slow about it. All right. By slow about it, I mean he upgraded literally all of his mines first. Understandable. Hmm. Uh, Bog Ships is going for the Magna Beam plan again. You know what? More power to you. Happy for your dedication. You know, I will say, there hasn't been a whole lot of describe exploitive type builds so far hmm. uh, the mortar phantom cheese was ridiculous um, but that's that one's not new and very rarely done because it's just kind of hard to coordinate um, everything else has been used with uh, some both consistency and diversity yeah. Like, we see aircraft, but they aren't the end-all be-all. We're consistently seeing just regular cannons and fire beams and mm -hmm. everything else. And it makes me wonder, are certain players keeping back the OP strats for some reason? Or are they just... Or are there none? Mm. Are you are you saying we've improved the balance? I I believe you. I believe yes. That is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, forty forty two just said that he gave everybody the nudge to uh, you know explore the space, <laughs> try different mm -hmm. strats. Uh, find it, break it. <laughs> Here come the deck cannons. Honestly, the point blank deck cannons are just disgustingly strong, and I've not seen a map where point blank deck cannons is an option and it not be the superior option. Hmm. They are that good.
Ooh. Flat getting shut down. And the Magna Beam is revealed. Uh, Tar's more aggressive opener. Uh, bullying Derbensian a bit. Uh, taking out one of his cannons. Mi hard mitigating a lot of the damage he would receive. Uh, one of the things that Team 1 is suffering... Uh, Meister with his cannon rush style... Um, can't actually use his cannons without slack actively using the Magna Beam. Which means if the coordination fails for whatever reason, Team 1's dealing literally zero damage. Which is not a good amount of damage to deal to your opponents. Um, so that's a thing. Oh, Meister's cannons too high. They didn't get pulled in by the Magna Beam. Oh, wow. That was a good uh, Nighthawk. There's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. The sniper. Bullying. And I think Team One's gonna get one more attempt with the Magna Beam before they're just out of luck entirely and they have to yep. change up strats. Magna Beam wasn't ready to fire. Ugh. The uh, Durban scene is just getting bullied here. You know, if Tar doesn't aim at Durban scene, Durban scene could door snipe Tar. Because those uh, rounds, if they go up to not Durban scene, then there's an angle where he could just send those shots directly into the directly into the deck cannon. All right, Slack. Now is your opportunity. You gotta. Oh, oh. I mean, oh. opportunity is a strong word, but you run out of time. <laughs> really running out of time here. Here it goes. There it is. <laughs> Nice. That's the damage they needed done. That actually evens it evens it quite extensively. At least until yep. Eaton fires his weapons, which he hasn't really done yet. Um, I mean, I guess he has, but... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, well... <laughs> so that's... That does... So that happened. That, that, yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, that does less damage to Team 1 than Team 2 would hope. Because now Meister has direct access to firing his cannons. Or at least he could fire his cannons directly. Yeah. So that's if uh, he can aim them. If he can aim them. But he does he does have the ability <laughs> to use them now. Also he has the Oh no. Oh. He had so much invested up there. Oh, he had multiple cannons. Heavy economy, and that's going to be a beautiful Nighthawk hit. Oh! oh. <laughs> All right, I was wrong. It was not a beautiful Nighthawk hit. It was a beautiful miss. And there it is. Shot. Shot. I was waiting for that shot. Derbensin yep. is the last one standing. The one gutted at the beginning and left for last because he was the least threat. 
You could do a Durban scene. 1v2 and a half. Turn on the ramming engines. Oh! Boda. Man, almost nailed that door snipe. The sniper. It's prowling. There it is. Cannon shell directly to the front. And it falls. Shh. Boat cannoneers wins round three. Very, very well done. That was a lot yeah. closer than I expected it to be. But that was good. That was very good. Mm. I like that. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> All right. You ready for some insanity? What does stop the devs from making brand new commanders? <laughs> More commanders. We're struggling just to keep the ones we have balanced. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, uh, we have, there are so many commanders already, and you know, like, you know, we'd like to get it balanced so that there are, everybody is, you know, viable. So adding more would just make it harder. Yes, that that makes sense to me. Mm. Another one from King Benjai. Uh, what changes to battleships non Tanya? That's the modded one. Would need to be would be needed to make a tournament viable version of the map. Um, I don't know I, if I know the answer to that. <laughs> so to say, I think that's more of an opinion piece. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking yeah. like tournament viable. Anything is tournament viable if you agree to it. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not you want to. So I don't know if that's a dev thing. Mm. I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. So correct me if I'm if I'm if I'm gauging this incorrectly. Trying to keep to the vanilla maps for the purposes of keeping it relatable to everyone. As opposed to saying, oh, you have to go download this thing to be to play the competition. Um, I mean, put it this way. Anytime we, we throw a new map into or attempt to throw a new map into uh, the competitive scene, there's it's looked upon very critically. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it would require from a competitive point of view it has to be you know obviously symmetrical balanced whatever you know those are the things that it needs to be um and it seems and the you know the, and it's the competitors that are very uh um vocal about what's an acceptable map and what isn't um and if they're not on board then it the whole thing becomes really hard to manage <laughs> so uh yeah i guess if everybody got on board and got the competitive scene behind it then it's possible you know i hope that's enough of an answer <laughs> there you go uh petition for it king see if you can make yeah. it happen yeah basically all right, next one. Oh, I like this one. Favorite yelling at QA moment. <laughs> Favorite yelling at... We don't yell at our QA um, uh, because we're just very appreciative of what they do. So, um, yeah, no, unfortunately, there's nothing juicy there other than uh, just asking them to test... <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think mm -hmm. my experience at qa has not been yelling so much as like begging pleading, pleading? looking look, more pleading, pleading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking in their eyes and pleading begging uh, yeah, please yeah. no not again uh, don't yeah. not like this <laughs> mm -hmm. it's more like qa yells at me oh jeez. a uh, question from underscore what will be the next major update for forts? Which I know that's a both a loaded question well, and a, go on. Well, every at the end of every season we release an update that fixes 
the latest bugs and tries to tweak the balance of things. So that that happens like clockwork at the moment. So there's no surprises. Major updates we don't we don't share that information because it changes uh, kind of constantly, and we we don't like like saying we're gonna deliver this and then not deliver it and disappoint everybody. So yeah, <laughs> but. What I can say is we are busy working on stuff, um, all sorts of things. And um, and so, yeah, watch this space. Forts is going to just continue to get better as a game. It'll get it'll get bigger as a game. You know, uh, obviously, we're committed to the the pro league and keep, you know, trying to keep the game competitive and entertaining. We're trying to improve it for the casters so that casters can um, show tournaments and it looks smooth and it, you know the information's there and it looks a little bit professional. Uh, yeah, there's there's all sorts of cool stuff going on. So I just can't say specifically what we're working on, but yeah, just rest assured that um, it's not going to just stay the way it is. It's just going to slowly get better and better as it has since it launched. You know. You love to hear it. All right. It looks like we're good to go. Moving on to the next round. I will say it is my favorite part. One of my favorite parts about forts is the constant updates. There's just always things being fixed and it's always being made yeah. better. I was just, I mentioned literally earlier on where I was like, oh my God, yes, it's saving all my camera location hotkeys. It's beautiful. <laughs> like that's yeah. a relatively recent addition. It is. It makes me very happy. So this is the bronze match, is it? Yes, we are on to the bronze match. Victor of this of this best of three will be crowned third place in the and 27th tournament. As 42 points out, is typically the meme match. Which... Yes. We do like to see that in amongst all of this serious competitive skill and strategy, you know. Let's we see have if, if one of these guys can do something crazy. <clears throat> <clears throat> we have certainly seen plenty of, I'm going to say, meme and fun strategies around. Um, mm. The bronze match is typically the one... I'm going to say reserved for the meme strategies. So we tend to see the wildest madness happening. Mind you, it's not always the case. Sometimes it's a real match. Uh, I'm based on the build orders the players are going for. I'm willing to go, I'm willing to say this one's probably shaping up to be a real match. Between Greenleaf here on the left hand side, playing as the Overdrive, the upgrade commander. And Bog Ships on the right-hand side, playing as Warthog, the Extra Fist Commander, Extra Strength Commander. I see one of the questions on the chat is, what is the worst bug or glitch that the devs QA players have found? And is look, it there's horizontal been a bunch. lasers? Uh, you know, there's that. <laughs> That's not really. I mean, it is in a way, but but I I do know like from say you and me and our perspective in trying to show um, a tournament in the early days if you remember some of those tournaments where we're trying to get people to connect and people aren't connecting and you're live streaming and we're trying to you know what I mean like it mm -hmm. was just not working well and uh, you know what should have been a you know three or four hour tournament ended up being like almost eight hours you know <laughs> it was mm -hmm. just endless connection issues you know like any like even now every time the uh, desyncs happen i'm you know i'm always holding my breath but it's amazing how much better the game can can kind of recover from a desync and stuff like that so like i would say any of the d big desyncs are the, always the worst ones because it just disrupts everybody you know so oh yeah uh yeah. The, um, yeah. There was also 
uh, when, when we did our first, um, what was it called? When Forts was free for a weekend, a free weekend, the first one, mm -hmm. we had a we had a bug that made it that made it look like uh, there was no games being played. <laughs> <laughs> like the lobby, the lobby list was empty. Meanwhile, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of people trying to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was bad. it was bad. Up into the double digit thousands, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Like I'm sorry, like the like tens of thousands, if I recall correctly. Was it? Yeah. I think it was. I think it was close to that. Uh, Forty two saying seven thousand. Seven thousand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I but it was. Slightly. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. Still, you know, compared to what our usual, you know, couple hundred or up to 500 players suddenly 7,000 yeah that game did not know how to deal with that <laughs> <laughs> surprise getting DOS attacked yeah yeah that was uh, that was great fun uh, tried to I, I did a couple recordings during that time and uh, it felt very different just opening a lobby very very different not getting jumped on by tournament competitors everywhere and half the people self collapse, which is kind of <laughs> difficult to get a good video out of to, to be behind the scenes. Like you're trying to get a video, it's like, all right, I just have to hit the player with the orbital laser and they just collapse and the game ends before I get a chance to fire. It's like, why? <laughs> I just want to cause explosions. I will say, interesting placement for the uh, runway here for Vicro. Uh, left hand side, it's below and behind his core. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that position before. There comes death. Oh, wow, he didn't die. Okay. I thought that was going to land, like, on top of his core and just end him directly. Ooh! Here's an example. You don't need to blow through the front armor when there's perfectly good ceiling armor that you could just bypass. <laughs> Very effective. Uh, team 2 rapidly developing flak. Lots of anti-air going around there. Conversely, team when it's developing more weapons, um, deck guns, Nighthawk ammo, things that Flak does, things that Flak can destroy. <laughs> A little bit of anti synergy. Oh, but he nails it and takes a cannon. Clean detonation, clean landing, and takes a cannon out. There are still five cannons on the field. So, uh, once this magnet beam fires, which will be firing momentarily. There it is. Wow. Nice shot. Jernistian eliminated. Poor Jernistian has been the front base. Yeah. <laughs> Just consistently. And he's... He, yeah, I mean, if you gotta play Team Tank, you gotta play Team Tank. It just hurts, you know? Feels bad, man. Is going to deal a lot of damage. Is it going to capsize? Oh, it might. There it is. Uh, it's recoverable. It's not so bad. Not so bad at all. Uh, unfortunately, it's a nasty repair build to recover that, so it's going to be a little bit before. Oh no, and they found that. The sniper found the flak. Um, good news is for Meister here, he doesn't actually need much in the way of economy to get that magna beam to work. All he really has to do is land the, is fire the magna beam on target, and he's good to go. He should have the energy for it, or at least can keep the energy for it. 
and in doing so enable this team to do the massive damage that they so desire. Which they should be doing right about now. And cannons fire first. From behind and from above. A solid hit, but nothing super critical here. That is a wall of flak. That is just an incredible amount of flak. And they kind of need it because uh, between Robo and Vicro, there's the air is thick and laden with things that need to be shot down. Um, Team 2 should be firing their weapons here in a moment. Their batteries are full. There it is. And it's gone. Wow. Direct from above. That is just pristine. Yep. Sniping of the core. Oops. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, what? You tried. <laughs> I mean, it made it across and dropped its payload. It just, you know... I didn't do anything else. Uh, team 2 should be ready to fire momentarily. Yeah, there they are. I was going to say, they, they don't have to wait for anything. They can just refire. Why, Meister? Okay. Yeah, that'll do. I'm I'm just excited to see them do it again. Uh, poor Vicro, like he knows he's just a punchy bag at this point. Oh. Hey, you took out the Magna Beam. Yep. Wait, no, I wanted that. <laughs> I had to wait for a whole new rebuild. Oops. Yeah, it's inconsequential. It's just a flack. <laughs> Let's see. That is a whopping eight cannons. It's kind of a lot of cannons. What? He fired that manually. And cannons from the front. Oh, Nailed it. Oh, nice. Yeah, he opened his quarter allow that to happen. <clears throat> yeah. He's letting it go. Well done to Team Bog. Ships coming in with the beautiful shots. Very, very well done. Had some absolutely gorgeous reach around shots there. Uh, just slamming from behind. Gonna get a nice slow mo of one of these. I, I know see a we showed it about, before. There's a question about why isn't there an instant replay feature in the game um, to show something that happened? I, I'm assuming this means like while a tournament is going on, and obviously we would like to be able to do like a replay in the middle of a battle, but of course then that would pause the battle to show that replay and actually i don't think i think yeah it would just basically stop the battle <laughs> what would need to happen is the game would almost have to spawn a whole other instance of the game in a window and show that <laughs> if you can imagine um so yeah that's uh it, it would i think you could possibly do it if you had a whole other computer uh you know, capturing the game that you could then 
rewind on that computer to, to view the replay in while the while the tournament's going on. You know. But uh, yeah, com complex issue to solve that in the game. Yeah, I can only imagine that would be a mess trying to do. Yeah. <clears throat> That's uh I can only imagine. Another question. Yeah. What is your favorite part of the job? My favorite part of the job? Well, um, you see, the thing is, is we all have different roles. Mm -hmm. uh, so if this is for me personally, um, I, <laughs> well, I just like what I get to do. You know, I get to add music and sound to the game and that sort of stuff. But I also get to um, be involved with the, the community, at least sort of on at a, at a higher level, just sort of overseeing the, the organization of it, I guess. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I, I really like, um, interacting with the community and helping, you know, that progress, I guess, and helping it grow. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess sound design and music, my, uh, those are my favorite things to do. <laughs> And uh, I don't get to do it too often in the game because, you know, it's all obviously related to um, when when we release new stuff. Uh, um, although on occasion I will make little tweaks to what's there or fixes, you know, when people find audio bugs and stuff. Excellent. That makes sense. Mm. Let's see... How long do you think you'll be able to keep supporting the game? Ooh, tough one. How long? Uh, well, that's totally related to how long will people keep buying it. <laughs> so if people keep buying the game, we'll keep supporting it. So, and, you know, that seems to be what's happening, which is why we keep updating it. So, uh, and we have all sorts of ideas for the future, so there's no shortage of... Uh, new stuff coming. You heard it here, folks. Make sure to s <laughs> to show off the game to your friends. Pass the recommendation. Yeah. Get everyone to know. Let them buy it so we can keep getting more forts. That's exactly it. Uh, all right. We are off to the next round. Round two in the bronze match. Let's see. Ooh, we're back to this one. Well, this map is fun. Uh, last time we had an amalgamate base that was just absolute madness, an abomination that should, should never have existed. I'm very glad that it did. Here we have on the left-hand side, Team Bog Ships. Probably won't be able to do Magna Beam Madness this time. Oh, um... <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Uh, but are facing off against their opponents. It's Team Greenleaf. Bog ships playing as Warthog for that bonus damage. Greenleaf as Overdrive for the bonus upgrade speed. We have a very skeletal looking base up here. Uh, Derbensian taking the pinch fist approach to construction. Hmm. Men do it. Let's see. I'm trying to gauge the strategies of the players. It looks fairly standard. So I think we're not going to see a whole lot of uh, super memes going on here. Not that this map lends to it particularly well. Um, I think we may actually be seeing more Magna Beam Madness out of, uh, out of Team 1 here. Like, they're doing... 
They're doing a build, which could just be Magna Beams here. Magna Beam Cannon. I should take a Magna Beam 20s. It's even harder than Magna Beam Cannon. Um, team 2, however, is going Mass Deck Cannon, which is different. Uh, we haven't seen that here before. At least not on this map with these players. Are we going to see the Magda Beam? We see the Magda Beam! Alright, yeah, they're, they're doing Magda Beams here again on Team 1. Uh, I shouldn't be too surprised, but I'm also a little surprised. Dropping wood on his teammate. Everyone does that. What's the little wood between teams? I don't know what Robos is doing here, and it scares me. This is not what you want your base to look like. Yeah. <clears throat> that looks a bit droppable. <laughs> uh, droppable is a good word uh, we might get to see <laughs> another amalgamate that would be fun mm. although I suspect given the lack of slicing weaponry um, we're probably not going to see an amalgamate so much as just gaping holes We've got quad cannons coming out of team one with magna beam follow-up. Uh, there is there is a plasma beam for Durbensine in the top base, which could slice mm -hmm. Robos off the top. That is a uh, that is a thing. Deck cannon. Death from below. Mostly misses, but what did hit did incredible damage, and uh, Derbens is going to need to do something about that. My brain says immediate portals because you can't take those kind of hits. Like, there's no face tanking that many deck cannons. No, you just can't. Oh no, wow. fire beam, plasma beam combo. Meister loses oh. everything. Secondary <laughs> wow. explosions. Meister falls. Okay. Uh, mm. We might see team two just wrecking team one here. That wasn't even close. <laughs> Needed to aim higher with those cannons. Needed magna beam a little bit lower. Instantly... Uh, Derbensin's base is, uh, defenses are entirely gone. And... Oh, wow. The battery is in front of the core, and it's not happy. Alright, well, um... That was a great start for Team 2. Um... If Derbensin falls off the ceiling... You could become a boat. <laughs> Boatification. That happens sometimes, and it's fun when it does. Oh, uh, speaking here's of your, fall off here the it ceiling, is. Yep. That's uh, got to be it, right? Uh, oh, he might he collide. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just a little bit too uh, much, a um, little bit too much horizontal <laughs> displacement. That was awesome. Bouncy fort. Mm. That's you know, 
One solution to the cannon problem. Magna beam. Those flak tried to save themselves and failed. Hmm. Um. Uh, is this it? That's looking like I it. I would assume so. Yep. Okay. Exposed cannons, three of them. Laser looking angrily at them. Yeah, that's that's how that goes. Uh, Team Greenleaf with some just deck gun and laser action uh, takes this round. Very, very well done. That's uh, round two. All right, we have so many questions. For the, the chat likes to talk to you. <laughs> uh, undie bolts and Nighthawks can't launch off aircraft carriers. So why did you choose them? I believe they were saying that the, uh, the real life Thunderbolts and Nighthawks are not naval naval creatures oh i see they're not yeah i see why i don't know <laughs> don't know the answer to that one the guy who who made them thought they looked cool there yeah it's go. it's pretty much that you know but that's an interesting uh uh you know fact to know yeah, I guess it is particular types of uh, jets that go off of aircraft carriers. Indeed. But are these aircraft carriers? That's a good question. They're not. They are boat forts. <laughs> <laughs> I love the distinction. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so there, there's this... There's, you got to be careful about applying reality to forts because you will be get you'll get frustrated quickly. <laughs> and there you have it. All right, what's another one? Do we someday see three D forts? Uh, I doubt that. I really doubt that. That's a entirely different game. I'm trying to imagine what that would be like. Hmm. Like that's just. It's a. It would be a different game. Very different you know, game. Like a, you could. You could. You, you could. It would be an approximation of what it is now. <laughs> it's like it's just not the same experience. Not the same hmm. vibe. Not the same. Exactly be an entirely different genre of game. All right, we're off to round three. Left hand side. It's bog ships playing as Warthog once again versus Greenleaf. <clears throat> playing as Overdrive once again. Very similar builds and starts for everyone involved. Shout out to the devs for looking at the howitzer and saying, you know what we need? A gun that shoots three of these at once. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so bassy when it fires. <laughs> Yeah, that's almost almost to a comical effect. I'm okay with this. Yeah. Let's see. That said, I'm very happy with the uh, explosions mod. That's it's so um, pretty. Who put that together? Was uh, that Samster? Was it was Samster? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's really good. That looks that makes the game look even better. I try to use it for all content I can. Mm, mm. It just makes everything look so much shinier. 
the lasers. It's cool, you know, like lasers. It's just, yeah, exactly. I like stuff like that because it inspires us, you know, to, you know, improve things and yeah, it's cool. Yes, and I think like it's it's just a graphics update, update change tweak adjustment Hmm. that makes it Hmm. look so much nicer nicer Hmm. shinier if it was realistic planes the thunderbolt would probably be replaced with the fa-18 the nighthawk with the f-35 i mean that sounds about right to me hmm Not so visually distinctive, though. I, mean, I guess the, uh, the 35 and the FA-18 are... I, from the side profile view of 2D. Mm. Yeah, that's that's something you have to factor in, is, is the readability during gameplay. You know? Like, it is obvious when a Nighthawk is coming for you. Versus a Thunderbolt. Let's see. This is a whole lot of deck gun out of green leaf. It's about time. Deck gun spam. I mean, deck guns tend to get better per deck gun you add. So mm. having more deck guns just means a lot of damage. Uh, Bog ships is once again going for the cannon plus magna beam combo. They're just having fun with it at this point. I mean, it's a, it's a good strategy. It's gotten them this far so far. Yep. It's We've seen the ups and downs of it. It's just a matter of... I think Vicro is gearing up to fire here. And he'll be ready to fire before Team 1 is ready to fire. Uh, Team 1 shouldn't be super vulnerable to damage here. Um, At least not from a single set of deck guns. Uh, There's more than a single set of deck guns is the problem. Um, Oops, Vicar accidentally upgraded too early, I believe. Uh, Vicro also blew off his own doors, which is a different caliber of unpleasant. Wow. Six deck guns firing, or five deck guns fired. Meister took effectively zero damage from that. Five D forts in multiverse time travel win. Oh no. (laughs) And it lands. Meister takes a heavy hit. Oh, 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 the Magna Beam comes online and fires. With the cannon support, Vicro loses the front half of their ship. Boat bisected. Uh, unfortunately for Meister, uh, there's a lot of retaliating fire. Uh, Meister maintains life for the moment. The sniper is on the prowl. Looks like it won't get the magna beam this time. Uh, Team 1 should be ready to fire... soon. Uh, Unfortunately, not before this next volley lands. 
boy, that's unfortunate. Slack is unable to fire meaningfully. He's trying to re list his ship a bit, just get the angle necessary to fire the shot. Uh, doesn't quite get it. <laughs> the angle at which that comes down. Disgusting. I think they're also trying to make the cannon come up from the water. <laughs> at least I, that, I don't know if it, I don't think it'll work because I think the cannon will expire or the projectile. Yeah, I think he was just trying to get any damage at all done. Yeah. It didn't even if it didn't go into the water, just having it go straight enough to slam into the front of Ivor would have been more than more than Slack could have hoped for without fully reconstructing his vessel. Or at least the foundations of it. Hmm. Oh, are they ready to fire again? No, no, they're not. Uh, Slack is suffering extreme energy issues. Uh, the hit onto his vessel did incredible amounts of damage, and Slack oh. has now lost pretty much all of his weapons and more of his income. All right, great. Uh, Durben seems ready to fire again, as is... No, it's just Durben scene. Everyone else is struggling. Struggling something fierce. There we go. There he goes. Is it? He gets it. Hits him with the reaper, reach around, or at least straight from the top. That's slack. Oh. <laughs> slack. It hurts so much. <laughs> Okay. Team 2 on the other hand, they're just going around doing their thing. Firing when they can. Uh, oh. Massive structural damage. Is this it for Oh ho ho, Derbenti barely mm -hmm. survived. Uh oh. Swing and a miss. Okay. That was cutting it real close. Vicro taking massive structural damage, a little bit of core splash damage. But interestingly enough, keeps just about all of his important internals alive and intact, which is surprising given the widespread damage it has received. I mean, he's so damaged that even losing a single strut causes secondary collapses now, which is... Awkward. Hey, the 20 millimeter coming in clutch, taking out a bunch of those guns. All right. Um, honestly, Vicro's list to the front. Sorry, trim. I keep saying list. Uh, Forward lean, forward rotation, means they can get more direct angle against Meister here. Which would be not ideal for Meister. Looks like they're focusing on Der Benzine for unsurprising reasons. Uh, namely, he's the one with the actual cannons. Oh. <laughs> Solid hit. Manages to get a door snipe on the 20 mil. Uh, takes out the 20 mil, but that's about it really. Oh, there's that direct fire triple deck wow. guy. That's the damage I was expecting to see. Yeah, it's Oof. bad. It's real bad. Uh oh, yes. <laughs> Derbenzin falls, and with that, um, Team 1 is reduced to a single cannon, which is not many cannons. 
Not many cannons at all. Looks like Vicar's could be adding in some mortars. Standard cannons from uh, Dranistian. Finishing, finishing off. Uh, honestly, there's not a whole lot more damage output that Team 2 needs. Uh, Greenleaf just has sufficient damage on the field to end the game. They just need to bring it to bear, which they are currently doing. <laughs> it's the placement of the uh, the forward uh, flak. Oh, he's fixed uh. it. He's fixed it. No, he's lost it. <laughs> and it's gone. I love seeing the air flooded with lead. Oh, so many st smokestack losses. <laughs> oh, what's Vicro doing? What? What happened? Um, He's toast. There's a self collapse. Yeah. You made a tutorial about stability tech, by the way. You should go watch it. <laughs> the greediest of players falling to self-collapsing. Happened twice so far, this, this uh, stream. Or this competition. Hmm. It's just a matter of moments before Meister goes up in deck. For, 42's pointed out that uh, Dranistian has a flashing strut as well in a dangerous spot, but I don't oh, think okay. it'll matter. There it is. There we go. He does have one in a dangerous spot, and it's not... Super braced. All right, with that green leaf, that good. takes the victory. Yeah, that's good. You know what that means? It is time. We will be moving on to the grand finals here in a moment. So we get the players in and get this final match started. A question from chat. What strategies were made that you would have never expected? <laughs> Well, the first one is core swinging. That was never designed. Up with that came from players. That's the first one that popped. T3s is another one, you know, which is a little bit related because it's, you know, using ropes to manipulate struts and stuff. But yeah, those are, those are two. I remember when we were first working on stuff, you know, we were all diligently building doors in normal door like fashions and then uh Dines, this is one of the uh people that were uh, let's see i think he was like a uni student uh who was working for us uh helping us out with map design he made some maps and he made the doors crossed you know what i mean like an x shape and we're mm -hmm. like what the hell <laughs> you know who would do that <laughs> it's like, uh -huh. you know, and now there's like, you know, tiny doors and so many st strategies that have been invented by the community and the players, not, none of which were 
on our radar when we were building the game. You know, I love that stuff. <laughs> yes, that is that is awesome. I can only imagine. That's that's the that's got to be the best feeling. Like, hey, we created a world, and mm. the players are finding new things and exploring it. Yeah, and enjoying it. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I guess uh, this is the whole thing about the horizontal orbitals. You know, like, we, we design them to work vertically, and and people are finding ways of making them work horizontally. The mm -hmm. question is, um, like, you know, we've been kind of fixing... Because typically what what's happening is that people are finding bugs that allow it to happen. And, you know, so we're fixing the bugs. And it does come across like we're, like, really anti-horizontal laser. <laughs> but as long as as long as the game is functioning as expected, you know, if you can figure out a way of doing it, then, you know, I suppose power to you, you know. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's... Most emergent gameplay like this, we tend to try and let, let happen. As long as it... As long as it... Uh, doesn't get like unbalanced you know what i mean and doesn't become a uh, an exploit that's the that's the main thing nobody likes i mean exploits are fun to discover and, and play with but competitively there it's no fun so they can be often abused for the uh displeasure of the receiving player yeah speaking of speaking of I'm going to say exploit, but exploit's probably not the right word for it. The super bracing, the uh, stability tech. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your thoughts on the stability tech as it is? With like the strut overlapping and such. Hmm. Well, I mean, the thing is, as long as... I mean, like, I'm just thinking off the top of my head at the moment, but mm -hmm. I haven't really thought about it too much. But I, I suppose as long as everybody has access to the same strategy and it doesn't, you know, um, unbalance things, you know what I mean, or make things unfair, then I suppose it's okay. I, you know, it is. sometimes I see these ultra-long struts in the game and I wonder, oh, is that a bug, you know? I suppose, you know what I mean? Like, if it's if mm -hmm. it's a bug or whatever, then it probably shouldn't be allowed, you know? Um, but, yeah, as long as everybody has access to the same thing, and it's in... It's all in the, the, the spirit of the game, you know? Then that should be okay, right? Okay. I like that. That's process. my take on it. That's... That's my take on it. <clears throat> Makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the right end, the, the main focus is just trying to keep things fair, you know? Mm -hmm. and, fair. and bug free for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it must work right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, makes sense to me. We've had we've had a uh, fairly bug free past few matches, which is yes. good. That makes me happy. It's moving smoothly. And we're moving smoothly right into the grand finals. As here we have on the left hand side, it is Team Boat Cannoneers. Eaton, Tar, and Taichu working together with the Eagle Eye Commander. They're facing off against their opponents in this mirror match Team Moto Pinder Circus. They are also playing the Eagle Eye Commander, Caraba, Pailule, and Ghost Eagle. In round one of this grand finals, winner of this series will become the champions, taking first place in the Fort's official tournament 27. 27. It's, it's been that's, a while. That's wow. We've been it's at a, this. <laughs> it's a lot of tourties, a lot of tournaments. Yeah. I'm glad to be here for every one of them. It's been awesome. How many uh, people do you think are, are watching us as we're doing this? Uh, I mean, I can give you the actual number. 
Hmm. Let's hear the actual number. Uh, I gotta see. see what Saul's work's got going on. He's Total got a phone. 550. 550. Live, That's live good. right now. Yeah. I mean, he, people enjoy it. That's pretty cool. I know the uh, Salzwerk in the uh, German community tends to just sometimes jump up to like 2,000, which is hilarious and awesome. That's amazing. At the moment, it's 263, but yeah, I've. It's. Uh, the German community is. Uh, German forts community is huge. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. At least those who uh, watch the uh, watch the uh, long form content. Mm. It's really quite cool. Uh, I, I know I certainly enjoy because I like interacting with the many different cultures of the world. Yeah. Eaton going for a strat that I haven't seen on this map in a while. Surprised about it. If done right, he can hit it with that timing. He could do a lot of damage. But I'm not sure it's worth it. Um, 42 is pointing out Gust Eagle's leaning um, the, uh, orbital yeah. launcher. <laughs> this one is a cata this one is an existential threat for the same reason that the uh, same reason that the um, short range deck guns are a threat. Mm. You just can't shoot it down in time. Yep. It's extremely difficult. You have to be sitting there with a shotgun or just get stupid lucky with a uh, flak. And for something as devastating as a deck gun or an orbital laser. Uh, it's effectively game ending on on a single hit, so you just you can't. It just goes down immediately, and for the uh, for the orbital laser especially, you don't even need to upgrade the thing, as the upgrade doesn't really change it other than make it easier to aim. And if you already know the the angle, you don't. It just doesn't. It offers you nothing. It's upgrade. Mm. So you just get it. You throw down a, uh, throw down a laser ammo, and then you just remove a fort from the game, and that's it. Has Gust Eagle built the uh, the ammo for it? Uh, it's completing in the next yeah. right now. Oh, gee. Yeah. So I'm actually kind of surprised to see the uh, I'm surprised to see the laser weapon taking so long. But I guess they don't have any uh, build speed bonuses going. It's almost 1 a.m. in Germany right now. Uh, I believe that's closer to 11 p.m. 1 a.m. France. Midnight. Jeez. When I am in France, okay, then yeah, probably when I am Germany. And there it is, and here comes the laser beam. And oh, oh. <laughs> Eaton saving it with mortars is anti air. That's not a. That's not something you see every day. Uh no. Uh, but yeah, he just saved himself there. Uh, yeah. There's a good example of, That's... despite all the anti air on the team, yeah. it, it just made it clean through, and the only reason it got stopped is because man used mortars. That was insane. Oh, I honestly thought that was going to hit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, me too. As a lover of mortars, I've used them for that mm. before, but I didn't expect to see it. You gotta be fast, and just, you gotta be ready to do that. And he was. Now Ghost Eagle is just gonna recharge, do it again. Yep. Try and catch uh, Eaton off guard, or maybe one of the other targets. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Gus Deagle will probably work on attempting to take out those mortars. A little bit more map control goes a long way for uh, Gus Deagle here. Ooh. Hey, yep. Hugh has a uh, sus looking um, strut. Same on both sides too. Yeah. Yeah, that one tends to uh, that one tends to get a bit stressed. He's already got stability tech around it. Um, he's got some stability tech around it. It should be fine. It's unhappy, but it should be fine. <laughs> Is it laser beam time? I believe it's laser beam time. Space laser beam team time. Nope. Uh, it's taking some damage. He's gonna have to repair to rearm. Uh, he should be building another laser ammo like right now. Yep. Because he doesn't have. Is that a? Man's built a Nighthawk? Why are you like this? They are hard oh. folk. Nope. Oh, okay. jeez. Yep. Oh, oh, wow. Clean <laughs> penetration through oh, the open dude. door. Oh, no. <laughs> Devastating. Through the open doors they fall. Uh, Team Modo just getting slammed out of the game just simultaneously. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> question is, how do they finish off pile here? Eaton's mortars are having a rough time, but he is applying pressure. Like, significant pressure. A little bit of friendly fire. Sniper's doing hilarious damage, as always. Mortar's not quite aimed well. Mortar's now aimed well. Hmm. Yeah, they're starting to dig through. Uh, this is what you usually expect mortars to do. They just kind of dig. And they don't stop digging. And then it just... The base just it has a hole in it. And the hole keeps getting bigger. Doesn't stop getting bigger. And the core disappears. Or it falls out, one of the two. Oh, oh, oh no, the <laughs> sniper. <laughs> The um, the snipers from Team One have been pretty oppressive this time. Not every day you see mini gunners like this. And Eaton's gonna get another kill with just the mortars, unless someone snipes it first. Nope. Tai Chi finishes with the sniper. <laughs> Beautiful. Round one goes to team Boat Cannoneers, taking the victory with a uh, some laser on laser action.
right. Give us a moment while we set up the next round. Just about ready to go. Nice and fast. It's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, that was such that was so like so frustratingly close watching Ethan almost get hit by that space laser. <laughs> I can only imagine the panic in that man's fingers. And we're off. Round two. Here we go. Here we have on the left hand side, it is Team Moto Pinder Circus playing as the Moonshine Commander. Moonshine Commander gets the energy shield doors and the uh, EMP effect on all splash based weaponry. Facing off against their opponents, Boat Cannoneers with the Eagle Eye Commander. Eagle Eye Commander, for uh, known for its double-shot weaponry. Allows for uh, extra burst fire when needed. He's in investing in getting himself some uh, water tech. There he is. A question for notes. Uh, well, this this one I think this is a very pointed question, uh, specifically from mm -hmm. Vicro, one of the uh, player, one of the competitors here. Do you guys remember the co-op on death feature suggestion? Is it being considered oh, yeah. by any chance? He's just straight asking. Yeah, this is this is an idea we've had up for a long time, um, and it's been talked about, and we and I think even we've even agreed on it but it for whatever reason it's just never made it to the top of the priorities um yeah uh it, it in, the answer is is not no <laughs> the uh it's more like uh i'm not entirely sure when we will get to that it's in the backlog somewhere yeah yeah it is it is the backlog it's is really a scary place to, to talk to. <laughs> uh. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. You know, of course, we're always re reprioritizing. Um, but I do like the idea of it. Uh, but it would change, you know, it would just be yet another game mode, you know? Uh, the question is, is how popular would it be? It would probably work really well for uh, tournaments or extremely coordinated groups. Yeah. Beyond that, I probably wouldn't like it. I mean, me personally. I mean, I guess the thing is, you know, like I've I've watched you in your stream and Cursus and, uh, you know, dare I say, on occasion you'll get taken out first. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it would give you the option of continuing to play rather than, you know. Oh yes. Not. Oh yes. 
There are absolutely um, times when it would be amazing. Yeah. Like, I would love it. Hmm. I love this background, by the way. Hmm. The Ascent environment. I am uh, partial to the darker ones. It's darker, subtle, simple, smooth. Hmm. Looks like we're seeing a lot of cannons and aircraft out of uh, Team 1. Team 2's got a mix of everything. We've got aircraft, fire beams and lasers, and then uh, point blank deck cannons again. <laughs> Could have seen that one coming. Tar again in the front line uh, doing the deck cannons. I wonder if they have it set on their team to say, hey, whoever's in front does deck cannons. Or if it's just, they're just, Tar just really likes deck cannons and he just so happens to get lucky with being in front. <laughs> Eaton needs a balance pass or no. <laughs> yeah, he's OP. <laughs> Nerf Eaton now. Eaton too strong. <laughs> Interesting. It's a twenty millimeter spam. Don't see that every day. Eaton going with the classic sandbag wall. I will say, I'm... It's so perfect. He does it so perfectly. Every... Not every time I try, but sometimes when I do this, I just don't nail it. And it happens more often than I would like. And I just... There's a hole in my sandbag wall. It makes me sad. Uh, we're getting a beautiful Nighthawk strike. Ghost Eagle's core is on fire. Uh, very on fire. Oh, take that. That's a lot of EMP. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> That's going to take out the deck cannons. Spicy. Oh, wow. oh Tara wow. lives. <laughs> With half a core and half a base. Holy smokes. Well, Tar is not long for this world. Uh, I will say, shout out to Kariba working with Pile here. With mm. Pal here. Peel here, sorry. This is different pronunciations of the letters of Peel here. Peel. Peel. Yes, thank you. Uh, literally opening a hole in his fort to allow the aircraft to fly through. <laughs> hmm. Uh, earlier, um, forty two is pointing out because he's watching the uh, APM statistics. Mm hmm. And Etienne's is spiking over 400 at times. Quite basically double everybody else. This does not surprise me whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. So you can imagine if he's playing there, his hand, he's like. <laughs> he's, it's just like blurring in real life. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds about right. Yeah. Mm. I. As someone who's done other competitive RTSs, that's not an unheard of or unusual number to reach. Right. You kind of expect it. At least for the uh, upper end players. 
Oh, I took out the Nighthawk. So despite Tar being absolutely destroyed here, uh, Team 2 hasn't hasn't received further damage. Um, owing in part to Team 1's uh, not really firing of weapons. Uh, team 1 has 20 mils, which are, I'm not going to say good for nothing, but not great for breaking bases. And the only other weapons they have on the field are all aircraft, which come in burst fire. So because all the other players are using burst fire weapons, there's just no real damage going on. Mind you, that is a lot of 20 mil. Oh, aiming. Uh, it was enough. Eaton getting go. focused pretty hard. Oh, that's doing a lot of damage. Yep. That's it. Eaton falls. He is... He is human after all. <laughs> he explodes <laughs> like everyone else. I knew it! <laughs> No, I think uh, Team 1 here is just at a substantial advantage. Uh, team 2 has fire beams. A lot of fire beams. Yeah. Eaton was mostly fire beams. And um, it left, like, they needed their mainline damage to come from Tar. And the moment that burst fire shot from Team 1 landed, taking out Tar's everything, uh, Team 2 kind of struggled to do much at all. Beyond. The fire beam spam. So it was a great, a great situation here for Team One. That Team Two kind of sort of needed to reevaluate and hard tech swap out, which is difficult to do in the context. Um, coincidentally, the pick of Moonshine means that shield doors exist and deal with mm. the fire beams incredibly well. Hmm. Yeah, that's causing just as much self damage as <laughs> enemies. Yes. yes, yes, it is. I would say that the mass EMP is definitely an unfortunate and un rather unpleasant experience for everyone on Team 2. Wow. That was satisfying. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's an America worth of airstrikes over there. Hmm. And, like, that scene that we just saw there was kind of the norm last tournament. Uh, it took two different players to get that kind of effect this time. Yes. Which is a step so, in the right direction. I think it's a step in the right direction, yeah. I think it could probably it, still yeah, we've use... seen a few. It's, it's the discussion of consist, consistent, like, sustained fire versus burst fire. Everything in Fort's, yep. like, f up to the ammunition has been nothing but a uh, burst fire. And adding a sustained fire weapon, like we could say any of the ammo weapons, uh, it just, it breaks Fort's in a way that nothing else really has. Just like, it breaks it at a fundamental mm. level. Yep. Adding the heat yeah. overheat effect to uh, to the runways made them more burst fire, but yes. they're still heavily sustained. They're still sustained weapons, fundamentally. Mm. So if you get enough of them, if they just get two of them going, it's they they, they bypass the whole you... burst fire. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I still consider them a problem, but, uh... They're definitely better than they once were. Less of a problem than they once were. Yeah.
Um, there's discussion that in Leviathan, the the ships bounce when the game first starts. Yes. It throws um, that's been fixed and will be in the next update. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> guys talking about updates to ports. Yeah, there you go. Bug fix. Bug fix leak. It's not even that much of a bug fix. Like, no, just not gotta really. load it up in the map editor for five seconds. Yeah, let it settle. Let it settle down and yeah. resave it. <laughs> One one true final match. Yeah, it's true. We're going into the uh, we're going into the final, the final round, the awesome. final match, the final map. Excellent. Winner takes all. Let's do this. And gentlemen, welcome to the finals, the grand finals of the Forts Tournament 27. This high seas match between Moto Pinder Circus and Boat Cannoneers. Here on the left hand side, Moto Pinder Circus, the team comprised of Caraba, Gustigo, and Peel. Pirule are playing as the Overdrive Commander. Overdrive Commander gets bonuses to all of your upgrades. Makes it all happen faster because going fast is good. It's a real time strategy game. Going fast in real time is better. You love to see it. They're playing against their opponents Eaton, Taichu, and Tar, the reigning champions, looking to maintain their title. Playing as the Hurricane Commander. Hurricane Commander makes everything go faster. Uh, that's not true. It makes construction speed, basic construction speed, not upgrades, go faster. So at 10% faster, which is not much faster. Uh, not compared to the like two, 2x speed of the upgrades of the overdrive. But it does apply to everything. Um, everything except upgrades. So that's quite good. Uh, you need more ammunition? This will get 10% more, which is quite, it, it's, it's actually quite good. It's, you can't sleep on it. it. It does fundamentally change several builds. The question is, what builds are the players going to be going for? Wouldn't be surprised to see Eaton going for deck guns here. It's in the forward most base, does all deck guns, does a lot of damage. Also wouldn't be surprised to see them going for the uh, space laser. The orbital sweeping beam. A little bit more all or nothing of a weapon, but incredibly effective as it is. Taichu in the middle base here. Going for aircraft. Not a surprise. Tar in the rear base. Not sure what they're going for here, actually. Um, really not sure. Uh, the rear base typically builds tall and goes for a lot of anti-air. Uh, the nature of this map specifically, um, because of the positions where each fort blocks all the other forts, like you don't have direct fire weapon capabilities as the uh, middle fort, for example, so you have to use indirect weapons. Uh, the rear fort has the option to build up really, really, really tall and shoot over everyone, assuming that the others remain short. So the others typically remain short. The forwardmost base does substantial amount of anti-air while remaining short. The middle base tends to do just focus primarily on indirect weapon fire and just raw DPS. And the rear fort tends to build up, do a lot of direct fire or semi-direct fire as well as uh, as well as anti-air. 
from above and behind. So you see Tall Fort coming in from Caraba here. I expect to see the same kind of thing from Tar eventually. Oh, Mad Lad. Okay. We're seeing Tier 3s out of Tar. Uh, this is something that I would expect to see from the middle base rather than the rearmost base. Uh, the reason for that is the rearmost base desperately wants to build up to get ants here. Um, I guess they could build up and have the tier 3s behind. Like they build up in front and the tier 3s behind. But then you're running out of space for uh, energy production, which is not usually how you want that to go. <coughs> uh, not usually how you want that to go at all. Eaton just shotgun spamming. This man's living the anti-air dream right now. Uh, definitely needs a little bit more anti-air forward facing so he can deal with potential deck guns incoming. Like the uh, the close range deck cannons. Coming in at a direct fire trajectory. It's worth noting that tier 3s on high seas maps are not a meme weapon. Uh, if you guys remember for years tier 3s have been Oh, these are a meme weapon because they're so bad at everything. Uh, they are still just as bad at everything. The difference being that boats are uniquely susceptible to orbital trajectories. Um, because of that, tier 3s are much, much more meaningfully usable. Um, to get specifics into that, these smokestacks require all the space above them to be clear. Which means they're effectively undefendable from tier 3s. Technically, you could do things like put a uh, an energy shield over it, but as you guys know, every energy shield you use... Uh, oh boy, the first volley comes through. That wasn't a game-ending amount of damage, but it was an expensive repair bill for Peel here. The deck cannons are firing. We have two level 3 deck cannons. And Eaton ants here, not quite enough. <laughs> Standard cannons can't be shot down oh, by ants here. Oh, wow. And the runway Taichu. is sniped out. Taichu loses the front half of their fort. Uh, that actually isn't super critical for Taichu. The runway can be reconstructed while the ammo is being reconstructed as well. And here we have the tier 3 coming in from above. As I was saying, uh, you can't really defend these smokestacks. It's, it's super difficult to do that. Uh, so tier 3s just always have strong targets and act direct access to the opponent's economy when you're targeting a boat fort. Which is... Uh, makes them much, much more threatening than they would otherwise be. Looks like Taichu is reconstructing as he needs. Working on his eco first before getting his weapons back online. Standard cannons coming in from above. This is another benefit of building tall. Your uh, standard cannons can just send, go flying over everywhere. Here comes the indirect fire weapons. Uh, that looked like a tier 3 coming out of Ghost Eagle. Oh. Pew. Trying to hit Eaton here. Eaton just doesn't have the AA to deal with this. The uh, airstrike is just so strong. Loses the front third of his fort. Kind of surprises he didn't sell off the batteries there. There's the deck can out of Eaton. I was wondering when he was going to get that in. <laughs> ah, no. It came from Karaba. Karaba has a tier 3. Um, the lack of ant... <laughs> he tried. Hey! His rear-facing flak managed to defend Taichu. Tar taking a pretty heavy hit to his core. Not enough to end the game. Compact tier 3 is scary? Yes, yes it is. Ooh! It was almost lethal on the peel there from a tier 3 shot. 
I'm not sure who's the biggest threat on Team 1. Team 1 is terrifying right now. <laughs> Karaba's got four cannons and a tier 3 and is bristling with flak. Um, Eaton's just struggling over there. Ghost Eagle with two with two tier 3 or two uh, level 3 deck guns. Exposed flak for counter aircraft and is working on becoming an aircraft carrier himself. Goose Deagle's eco just keeps getting hammered, which is, I'm sure, unpleasant. And of course, Peel here has basically destroyed Eaton and Taichu. <laughs> it's a raw damage output from the airstrikes. Close. <laughs> Taru taking some heavier hits. I think Taru desperately needs to develop additional anti air. Just flak in front and above his his core. Just set up a flak tower because uh, Team One's about to get a lot more. Lot more aircraft coming, coming flying through. Peel taking another hit onto his core. Uh, splash damage, but nothing critical was lost. Here comes Team One. More eco on there. Oh, that tier three nearly taking out. Oh. Hey, there it is. Nice shot. There's the deck nice gun I was looking for. Close range, point blank, and low. Peel loses their runway. No more launching of aircraft. And capsizes. Oh gosh, oh, Eaton takes like... another another one. But he's actually pretty fine here. Ghost Eagle doing some anti-tier 3 defenses. Oh, is Taichu, is it time to remove Peel? Is it time to remove Peel? I think it's time. Oh, well. Goose Deagle has Good other, has other uh, ideas. Oh, no. He's targeting Karaba. Which is probably the better target. Get some hits, but honestly, Goose Deagle, with that defense, definitely saved Karaba there. So many machine guns. Uh, I think if Eaton closes the spread on this, and then yeah, there it is. Okay. It it hits so fast that even the the energy shield can't get up in time. Can't just <laughs> form in time. Oh, tier three on tier three violence. Tier three. Oh. Again. Karaba loses his tier three and oh, oh I think this might be it. This is bad. <laughs> he crunches oh. and collapses. Shatters into a half a dozen pieces. There he goes. Yeah. Tar rolled a nat twenty. Oh, to be fair, he's got a whole. Oh. He's What's got a whole now? cup full of nat of d twenties. It just keeps rolling over and over again. Finally landed on a twenty. <laughs> got the crit and took out Karaba entirely. The question is, who's the next target to the Tier 3 artillery battery? Uh, now, Team 2 no longer has to worry about Tier 3s. Like they, the, the enemy team, or at least uh, Team 1, no longer has access to Tier 3s. So it's just going to be a slow and inevitable attrition that Team 1 has to deal with. Um, Pile lost just about everything he has no major weaponry he desperately needs to get more weapons onto the field uh, the aircraft is not a bad idea Eaton almost detonating himself with that shot <laughs> which is terrifying uh, but he fixed it so that shouldn't happen anymore uh, Ghost Eagle is in a great position really 
uh, Ghost Eagle can deal catastrophic damage and has been devastating Eaton for a while now. We've seen it's been hammered. You see the aircraft doing another good run here. It's not enough to break Eaton. Um, Ghost Eagle just didn't have enough. It was close. Man, once Eaton falls, Tai Chi's gonna be in an interesting position. Um, realistically, I think if Pile were to swap to standard cannons, might be able to do some great work here. Or deck cannons. Deck guns would do too. Deck guns would do great. Oof. Ghost Eagle almost got his primary weapon and sniped by a tier 3. Is it time to remove Ghost Eagle? I think Tai Chi said enough of Ghost Eagle. No, there's no way. Ghost Eagle's not gonna let it happen. There it goes. Pile takes a critical hit. And he falls. Uh, sorry. Pile chopped in half. Bisected at the knees. Loses all of his economy in the process. Not an amazing experience for him to endure. Eaton just getting bullied. That's yep. that's been this that's been this game so far. <laughs> um So interestingly enough, this doesn't super affect the the condition of the game. The reason is that Pile wasn't an active Offend wasn't an active threat. It hasn't been for quite some time. While he was working toward being it, uh, Ghost Eagle was really the only one who could meaningfully do things. Uh, as long as Pile, Peel, I keep saying A. <laughs> as long as Peel stays alive and can take hits as he is doing like from Eaton's cannon right here then Peel <laughs> is doing what Ghost Eagle needs him to do so that Ghost Eagle can get his aircraft online again and actually eliminate what I presume will be Eaton more two or three hits on the Ghost Eagle His core down at 32%. He's so close to going away. Oh, that's that's rough. Um, mm. That's not what you want to see happen if you're Gust Eagle right now. Oh, and the the fire beams are gone. Or at least almost all of them are gone. Tier threes have finally worked their magic, taking the creatures out one by one. Here comes the airstrike. The airspace has been cleared. Oh. Yeah. And it's gone. Peel is the last remaining player on Team 1. Sending out buzz saws of spite. But, um... <laughs> Eaton purposefully capsizing himself to give himself the angle. Oof. It's over, chat. This is how it ends. Um, not with tier 3s though, because those can't hit the broadside of a barn. Uh, apparently neither can the airstrikes. <laughs> There's so many shots just landing left and right of Pile. Of Pile, of Pile. They're fine. Oh my god! <laughs> They're finding him not very appealing. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Hey. <laughs> oh god. Um well, at this rate, Peel might have an opportunity to reconstruct himself. Uh, he's got economy again. Um He's getting himself some econ he like he's actually got propellers and smokestacks. <laughs> <laughs> like
You could do it. Alright. Oh. <laughs> Tier 3 almost hit. <laughs> this is, there we go. <laughs> oh. Surely. No, 2%. 2%. <laughs> <laughs> He's selling everything off to let it get hit. Mm. Or to, you know, He's afford... peeling him like an orange. Oh, oh. oh, oh it hurts so oh. much. <laughs> Surely... No, he missed. He can't be doing this on purpose. Oh, the tier oh. three! <laughs> There we go. Finally. <laughs> GG. <laughs> that was great. I've never seen so many shots fired at a target uh, and not hit. <laughs> oh my god. It's beautiful. That was so good. Oh. Oh god. The best part about that, that whole game, at least I'm biased here. <laughs> Tier 3 has got what is effectively the killing blow on this. The thing, yeah. the base that was the biggest threat that was absolutely destroying Team 2 got Tier 3'd. It was so very close to happening. Like, Team 2 was not winning this until the Tier yeah. 3 landed. Yeah. And then everything <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> Um, uh, 42 has clicked on Eaton's metal count there. I don't know if you've got the, the, the lobby up, but yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's insane number of metals. <laughs> Extensive is the appropriate word, I believe. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that was great though. Uh, huge congrats to Boat Cannoneers for winning, uh, the Fort's High Seas Tournament 27. That was great. That was and beautiful. Everybody is exhausted now. <laughs> yes. It is very late over on the Europe side of the world. I believe it is time for everyone to wind it down. Big shout out. Big congratulations to everyone who has participated. Congratulations to Team Boat Cannoneers, Eaton, Taichu, and Tar taking another victory and adding another badge to their cabinet. Their and entire I'd like room. to... Uh, I'd just like to uh, thank uh, you and Cursus for all your support, always helping us out on these streams and stuff, and to 42 for running the uh, the cat herding center, um, and uh, Ohm and, and all the crew in the community for helping uh, just keep everything uh, running smoothly. And of course, uh, a huge thanks to all the players and the teams for getting involved and showing us their skills and yeah it's just it's just awesome and uh, and um, and a shout out to everybody watching on the live stream and asking the questions it was nice to have a chat with with those folks and uh, see such a such a lot of love for for forts which is awesome so yeah thanks guys it's always a pleasure always a pleasure all right then I think we are good to go here. So let's uh, we get back in the lobby. Okay, we are getting back in the lobby. We are getting back in the lobby. We are in back in the lobby. Oh, okay. They seem eager to play one more. Oh, we're going to get another. Uh oh. Oh, uh oh. Oh, what's happening now? They want. They want. Stream. Okay. You need to stream to know us. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching uh, uh, 42 screen while all this has been going on because there wasn't enough slots. So it's worked out well. Okay. Leviathan pre-built. Why are we doing this? Why? <laughs> okay. 
You know what? So what is this? Go. You reckon a meme match or are you gonna It's it's a try. meme match, yes. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, let's got... just start getting Uh what is producing all of our energy? Uh oh uh oh uh oh Okay. <laughs> uh, do we have sniper? We do have sniper. I would say meme match, but it, it is so. This is Leviathans, but it comes pre-built with weapons. So it's yeah. the same. It's the same vanilla battleship style vanilla map, but it comes pre-built with weaponry. Uh, so you could just fire at things whenever you see fit, which is very very effective for the whole <laughs> removal of hostility thing. Uh. It looks like uh, okay. enemy team got the favored. Hits. Uh, let's see, we've got some more of this constructing. Ooh, hello. Please hit. It's not gonna hit, okay. They are sufficiently defending against such things. Understandable. Are you on the same team as 42? Uh, or are opposite, you the opposite team. Opposite team. Okay, because I'm watching his perspective. <laughs> so. Ah, yes, you get to see. I the can tell you all sorts of things about their base. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I don't doubt it. <laughs> this not auto fire. What's going on here? Okay, all they're handling that. Uh, we could really use some additional energy production here, is what's happening. There's a pre-built fort's very different. Usually comes down to whoever fires first successfully. Yeah. It reminds me of the show map. The show map that we used to show at trade shows when we we're initially marketing forts and we just give people pre-built forts full of weapons and people would just rock up and start blowing each other up they thought it was hilarious <laughs> well I don't doubt it it's because it is you can I think that map is still in the game show map I think <clears throat> hey got it with the sniper nice That coming on online and clutch. What on earth are you doing? You're just showing off what you're doing. Oh, I see what they're going for here. I am not prepared for such things. Not going to happen. Is there something peculiar hanging at the bottom of your boat? Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> um, they are trying. I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to get it to stabilize there, such that they can uh, have an underwater. What is it called? It... An underwater uh, turbine. That's not. A, that's not a turbine. It's a smokestack. I don't want a smokestack facility, which is, right. you know, awesome, but I, I suspect it's not going to happen. But there might be reasons. trolling for fish. Trolling for fish. 
Maybe. You know, I've heard there's some fish that. down fish there. As, fish as a resource. Fish as a resource. Yeah, weaponized Dude. fish. We did have that one mod that turned everything into fish. <laughs> we did. Oh, it's bad. Oh, is it going to uh, land? It's really bad. It is. Yep. Uh, there's no way this lives, right? Like, that's just... Holy smokes! <laughs> I see, right of money. That's what's happening here. The real trick is getting the core down there. Oh, we got a solid hit. Oh, yeah. Um, this is, uh, something's gone wrong down there. <laughs> Something you never want to hear from your doctor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. What else am I looking for out here? <laughs> I kind of liked having these here, but we're running a little low on weaponry at this stage of the game. Um, can I get... No, I cannot. Ah, oh, the 20 mil took it out. So close, so far away. Alright. Alright, someone else do that. Here comes the airplane. This whole place is just so close to crumbling down. Alright, what else can we get up here? Let's get you going. Oof! Oh! That's an exposed core. That is. It is uh, really rather unfortunate. can we get working on here? Uh, let's do one of... We just don't have money, do we? That is certainly an issue. Uh, let's see, what would be a good way to handle that problem? Kinda need to have something like this here. And let's 
reloading. It's fine. Um... I feel like we're struggling on the economic front to the point where I need to work on eco more than anything else. I still have no idea what's going on below, but it's it's dragging us down into the ground. Which is just uh, down below the sea, which is just a weird place to be. <laughs> it's a really weird place to be. My god, they're getting portals everywhere. They're just, they're clearly just having fun with it, whatever they're doing, and uh, building some fun stuff over there. I have, what on earth is, it's just, there's more happening. Done with the lasers. Ah. would have to be all the way down here. Which is not going to happen. But I can get some more here, I suppose. This counts, yeah. Better than nothing. Alright, so this should solve a bunch of these problems. This is what death looks like. Usually, at least. Alright. Well, they didn't blow us up. Not entirely, at least. Nice. <laughs> Alright, uh, so that's looking pretty solid. Uh, next, we need more of this. And that's happening. Ok, 
Okay, that's gone, which means these are here. <laughs> Ooh. Right, another set removed. Honestly, these are working pretty well. This just here, I think. Let's put it here instead. They're burning through! Pulling them apart. Uh, they're definitely letting us do this to some substantial degree. Do we need more of this? And I like what we're doing over here. It ignite. You know what? Worth it. this. Uh, uh, doesn't have the eco for it. Energy production is most definitely an issue. Still an issue. Taichu. That's completing. These are completing. Woo! Nuke came from behind. I like this. These aren't ready to fire yet. Yep, I'm gonna tap out. All right, and have a good one. You too. Thanks for everything. Talk oh, to you pleasure. later. Good luck out there. Definitely too high. Sadness. We should be doing some great damage here. Howitzers still missed. And I'm very saddened about that. Oh no, you overdid the... Okay. Oh, we're getting to their eco. And 
Oh, 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 I don't know what I hit, but it wasn't enough. Come on, come on. You're turning your boat into a minesweeper. Good. Oh, that's a that's the perfect amount of ants here I want to hear. Uh, none. Right, we got some solid hits there. Nighthawk's going strong. Yeah, we don't have more right now. Um... This is real close. I can't. This one can't fire anymore. How it's just hit. Oh, we got a great shot onto their... their aircraft launcher. Our own nukes are getting taken out by our... Or at least our nukes are getting taken out by our own aircraft. Good hit, good hit. And next, more aircraft under construction. Uh, let's probably get some of... We do not have the energy for that, is what I'm seeing. Uh, could have been way worse. Honestly. ready to come off cooldown. Is there a world in which we want this here? Uh, let's just put this somewhere else, anywhere else. Here we go. Oh, so close to getting back to their eco. Please tell me we can plasma beam into their front now. Come on, dig. Dig. Keep digging. Wait a minute, how low can I aim with this? Way too low. Still too low. Alright. There goes their rear, collapsing into the abyss. If we hit that, that would be amazing. Just suck all the nukes into the, uh... Into the darkness. Okay, just let me tame this higher. That's a much better hit. My objective right now, dig through their front, because if they're focusing rebuilding their front, they're not dealing with this stuff, which we're constantly reconstructing. That's a heavy hit. And look at it. Look at it smash. Nice. 
And now we do cannon follow-up, which he's currently working on. How is this looking? This is fine, too. I see snipe. I see cannon over there exposed. No! Don't dip into the water. There it is. That's a nasty hit. Uh, is there... I think we don't want to hold. I think we don't want to fire for a moment. Is there anything else we want here? More economy. How is this pre-built? I know, right? This was not how pre-built usually goes. Like, you don't claw your way back and pre-built. That's not... That doesn't happen. Ooh. I'm okay with this, because the nukes are going to attract it up here. And they're all merged in the same spot. Look at it. It's beautiful. Are these ready to double shot? No, not yet. Plasmas, I kind of want to double shot. I'm just digging through. I suspect they don't have a uh, way to come back from this anymore. Typically, pre built maps like that, what ends up happening is the first ones to fire and first ones to hit their opponents uh, win because you start with so much damage, you start with a fort destroying amount of damage. So all you have to do is hit your enemy's fort, and then you win. Uh, apparently, we didn't. It wasn't wasn't so one-sided. Hey, beautiful. I can. Tai was that Tai Chi with Tar doing the whole mind sweeper madness down there? Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that has been a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed the Forts tournament. Big shout out to everyone who made it. But that's going to be it for me tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good night out there. I'll see you guys in the next tournament. Later.